Here comes the axe, and here comes the smasher, the demolition, walking disasters. Pain and destruction is our middle name. Search and destroy you, run and we'll find you. There's no place to hide, the demos will get you. Pain and destruction is our middle name. A demolition. A demolition. Let's kick some ass. And there you have George Gatton with Demolition. There it is. What's up? Welcome to Kicking Ass with Jesse and Andy. Brought to you by American Barbell Club. Go there and buy some gear. They got a. Uh, he actually sent me the new shirts. Oh, well, really? They didn't, they didn't make the design yet, but, but yeah, American Barbell Club is making a kicking ass podcast, um, kicking ass with Jesse and Andy t shirt. And it's based off Delta Force. Yep. With uh, It's like Chuck Norris and the old dude. Lee Marvin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Lee Marvin, and you're Chuck Norris. <laughs> with, I think they got like bazookas on their shoulders. Oh, yeah. yeah. So nothing kills you more than that. <laughs> they're made, basically, they're making a Delta Force-themed uh, kicking ass shirt, and we're super pumped about it. But yeah. yeah, go check out American Barbell Club. And today, yeah, we're just talking about this past weekend. Yeah, we're just talking. This is a little recap of the weekend, because we've been talking about the 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 every time I Christmas tid the season yeah uh, we show just had an insane weekend pretty much and what did you we're both basically suffering from what you call it post it's like uh you know like there's post traumatic stress. stress disorder this is like post stress stress hangover yeah and it's real yeah I, I just kicked out a half hour ago but I started stressing Wednesday of last week and uh, my week pretty much ended last night and today is a tuesday yeah so we uh yeah. we had the big big show three thousand people sold out uh riverworks in our hometown of buffalo new york uh every time i die was the headliner they were nice enough to let us do a little wrestling show you're welcome at 1 30 in the afternoon before that and uh it was i mean doors opened at one wrestling show at 1 30 every time i die started at 11 p.m so it was a long day yeah so for those of you that hung out man that was that was incredible and gotta say this too like uh it that like this year was definitely like a litmus test for the rest for the next coming years yeah we're like okay let's get all the bugs worked out and i think like having a 10 match wrestling card yep was kind of a bad idea yeah too much right? yeah. too much usually you said eight is yeah, I think number. I think next year is eight. Um, but we were sucks. we were also like the first wrestling show to go short. Like oh we were my fig- God. we were figuring one thirty to four thirty. We got done like just after four. Yeah, amazing, awesome. Yeah, and the eight man went a little over, and I like I remember telling those dudes it was like we're way behind. So that's yeah, totally fine. Go for it. They, uh, I mean, like, like you said, I I keep thinking that too. Like. Of course, there's things we could do better for next year, but all in all, I mean, you kept saying it was the best day of your life. <laughs> I mean, it was. I've heard a, you say was, that numerous times. It was the best day of my life. Yeah. Like, if I had left that place and died, yeah, I would have been like, been a oh, happy that's man. cool. It that's was, great. It, honestly, it, the whole thing pretty much went off without a hitch. Without a hitch. The only thing that happened, like a like a girl was crowd riding during our set, uh, yeah. and she fell and hit her head. Yeah. Um, But she messaged us the, mor- you know, the next oh, morning and was I didn't like, hear this. hey, we're... I'm totally fine. Really? Because she was stretched out. Yeah, I, but she you know, she had a thumbs up on the way out. Oh, was I, I where I was where I was at. I you know everything stopped. I saw you know everyone started cheering. That's why they were cheering. Yeah, yeah. she was giving the thumbs up. She gave the thumbs up. That's and super got cool. But she, her, the, she sent me a direct message, and it was a picture of a bloody pillow. <laughs> really? Was it from her head? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She split her wig. Um, but. I mean, like I said, yeah. Obviously, next year we know what to work on, but it, dude, it was an awesome day. Even so, I mean, there was even a lot of bands, and I, like I couldn't have figured a band out that I would have cut because all the bands were amazing, and all the wrestling was amazing to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it's hard to go. Oh man, next year because like, you know, less matches means less work for guys. Exactly. Um, and then there's just things that we need to do, like. Uh, already starting to talk about next year. We're already starting to talk about bands. We're already starting to talk about well, the how show. About, how about the fucking ticket sales for next There's year? There's already 1,600 chicken sales. Yeah. We, they, for next what year. Was it? They released 1,000, 
Yeah. At 35 bucks, those Mitch told me those sold in just over three hours. Yep. They released, was it, the, I'd imagine they released another yeah. thousand at $40, yeah. and there's 600 of those have sold? Yes. That's for next year. It's, it's, that's insane, dude. So we're ready to rock. You know yeah. what I mean? And there's only one band announced. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then you showed me the text from brother, brother from pup, which was yeah. like the nicest thing ever. That's amazing. Like that, uh, Stefan from, from pup, pup basically just said like that. Is he, was the, guy, is he the guy with the, the glasses? Best. Yeah. Okay. Laura talked to him and she was like, he's yeah. from Toronto and he was yeah. incredibly nice. Yeah. And just was like, that was the best day. We seriously watched your guys set with our jaws dropped. Dude, some of the picks from your guys set, like, cause there was a balcony. Yeah. Some of the picks from like up top. It it just looks like Wembley yeah, Stadium or something. TV, yeah, it like it was a like I, there was like two points in it where like you know uh, Anthony Gaines is like calling the shit city like he he called Buffalo like a shit <laughs> city and <laughs> big heel promo. They did like the most amazing job being heels. Yeah, like, ever super Tim old, and just super old school. Yeah, and like it was exactly what it needed to be. And like, like, I want I wanted to tell Nick Ametti, sorry to cut you off there. No, it's okay. uh, I wanted to tell Nick Ametti, like in the nicest way possible, like like dude, you look like an asshole. But like in like the best way yeah. you can imagine with For your sure. rhinestone headband and yeah. your white. I knew he leather knows jacket. that too. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. uh dude, I you know, the next day, man, I like you know, we had Smash like the next day. So like my day my week basically started on Wednesday. People started flying in on Wednesday. Yeah. You know, and like uh, we had like Nate, who was um, uh, Brody King, and his wife flew in that day. We yep. had Matt Vincent fly in that day. Yeah, we podcasted with him that day. They literally just shadowed us like the entire time. So it was like, hey, I'm going to go do this really mundane, boring thing. All right, I'm with you. And then yeah. like Matt was there with me. Like, I mean, I was going to get into it. Like, Matt Vincent, dude, like, what a brother. Holy dude, shit. Dude, and like really the whole time, like the whole time I was like stressing and like, you know Kevin and you know both know how much I was stressing about yeah. that it was like every single time I was stressing Matt Vincent's just like what do I need to do man like, yeah what can I do like yeah. I go and it's like that dude doesn't have to do that and also I essentially mean, he's on vacation oh yeah but also like you know he he kept joking around that he's unemployed on the podcast but like he does his own thing he's not yeah. employed by anybody he runs his own businesses so like yeah he understands the whole process so he's actually like a really good guy to have around yeah and it was it was just great like crazy to me that he was just like do you need me to do anything i'll go pick someone up at the airport I'll, yeah. I'll do this i'll do that and that's everybody's kind of under the assumption that oh you guys have this christmas show you're doing <laughs> yeah. you have all these people doing it for you yeah you're like oh you're shit. gonna go in there and it's like well there's yeah we do have a team of people but like i'm there setting things up and yeah. doing stuff and and like i'm there essentially to oh wait yeah hang on kevin just pointed at a bang <laughs> so in it's unison. It's great timing. Bang. <laughs> Give us a goddamn sponsorship. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just, I don't know, you know, and it, it, like, I, you know, I said this the, yesterday where it's like, like, I got like punished to high hell after the match or after the, uh, after the, the, the event ended. Yeah. Like all my dudes had to like went to the after party. And yeah. I'm sitting around, and I'm just getting stragglers, and I'm getting beaten down. In like, your in your underwear. <laughs> and I just wanted to go, not like there, no, 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 no. I'm talking about when I went back into the locker room. Oh. I was there, and it was just like stragglers. Like, oh, yeah. Just the worst of the worst. High school buddy stragglers left. who've been drinking for 12 hours. And they're not, no one else is around. Like, the high school guys oh. they went to high school with, it's like it's like West Seneca guys talking to me about bullshit. Yeah. And um, After, like, the longest day of your life. Yeah, it's like, and I'm just crushed. I just want to go home. And I have to wrestle the next day. Yeah, and, but which we didn't get to yet was, I mean, I remember, I think I was still there at 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah. And we had to leave for Toronto for Smash at like 10 a.m. Yeah. So, so there you go. I just did that. And I'm just sitting there like, and I remember like, I just got in my car and it was like the most emotional grenade that's ever <laughs> you been blown said, you off. Said a little breakdown. It was just boom. And I just broke down in my car. I just started crying like <laughs> uncontrollably. I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And then just like, all right, well. Here we go. I like wiped my eyes and just drove home. <laughs> Put my head down for like 30 seconds and then up ready to wrestle. I think the thing, the moment for me was like after I was on last and then I showered and got changed. And then me and Laura went to go get catering. 
Yeah. And it start everything finally started to come down. Like, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm pretty much done. Yeah. And then. But I don't know why I still like this is just like me all day. Like I was still like walking past like wrestlers and people on the show and stuff. being like, you good? You need anything? Is everything OK? Like, but I was like, no, it's, it's over. I don't I don't have to do this anymore. Anything. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah, that was. Yeah. Like, and it's like uh, it was like the biggest reward. And obviously, like the wrestling was it did. I didn't want it to be an afterthought or a before thought or anything like that. But it did come off that way. A little bit, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, just and it, and it's such a foreign thing that it, it's like, hey guys, and this is gonna happen at the event. You know what I mean? Yep. And I, the only thing that I regret is the fact that like, uh, you really can't regret that. But like, wrestling fans really didn't get a chance to buy tickets because it sold out so quickly. Yeah. So like, but that's like I I think you might have said this now. <clears throat> now for next, sorry, my voice sounds like shit. Now um. Next year, there will be more of a buzz for, the for wrestling, sure. and they'll yeah. understand it more. You know, what yes. I mean? it's the first time you did it. Yeah. So, but as, just, you were, yeah. as you were saying, like, yeah, like it was, it was weird to yeah to sell the wrestling fans because it sold out in forty eight hours. Yeah, so. yeah, of course. And like that, that was the only thing. So like, there was a couple times there like, were wrestling fans there though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But like going back and like watching it, like watching the matches, like, oh, you guys are so quiet. Like, yeah, quiet I hear. I kind of got a kick out of it. Um. At Probably least def- definitely in the opener because, you know, like I told, opener was RJ City, Dick Justice, Gregory Iron, and they didn't call it a Christmas death match. They called it Christmas chaos. Yeah, yeah. And it was, which I'm really happy we did. I'm, I'm glad we did it that way, not a, just a regular wrestling match. I, I got to, and I apologize to those guys because they were in such a tough spot that I, that I don't think that match could have been any better. Oh, it was so and, good. Yeah. And I, I actually enjoyed it, like listening to the crowd because, People were still flooding in too. They just yeah. opened the doors a half hour ago, so that people were still flooding in, and like you could tell, like once the show started, they're like, "Oh, there's something going on over there." So they're going, you could just hear people getting into the match more and more as time went on. Yeah, like, yeah, but unfortunately, it wasn't, by the end of that match, it wasn't like, "Oh, we get this now." Like every match was kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it just it just makes us have to work harder. Of course, all. and that's it. Like now, it's like, just you know. Take a day, and then it's just back to the grindstone. Like, what can we do? How can we improve it? Yeah. We have a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we have one year. Tickets are sold. To like, literally. Riverworks, Riverworks is a, a phenomenal venue. It's unreal. And they just want to work with us. Exactly. Um, Like, the, the, the manager kept coming up to me and going, like, today's a Hallmark day. <laughs> Today is a very golden Hallmark day for this business. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, it's all right, amazing. man. You shouldn't be telling me this because I feel like I'm going to gouge you next time <laughs> on something else. <laughs> You're going to come at me with a price, and I'm going to say, go fuck yourself. Yeah, That's, how about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah but anyways. So you kind of sell yourself short. Yeah, and it's like it gives us a year to talk CM Punk into wrestling. <laughs> That's it. I'm, and I said that. I go, and I don't. there's no chance Phil listens to this, but Phil, if you're listening to this, I'm going to text you every day. <laughs> I've got until the Christmas show. Over 300 days. To December 15th <laughs> is the date. And as of January 1st, I will text you every day saying, wrestle at the Christmas show. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Folks. Kevin Bennett versus CM Punk. Yeah, exactly. At the Christmas yeah. show. Young Kevin Bennett versus yeah. CM Punk. <laughs> um, if you want to, uh, I was also thinking too, if you want to just talk about knocked loose for two hours, I'm totally, man, totally into that, man. I love... I, here's the thing, right? Like, love them or hate them. And a lot of people have, like, a negative... If you're in the hardcore world, for some reason, people have this, like, negative thing against those kids. It's weird. Because, like, they're so into hardcore. Yeah. And so into music that it almost seems like it's a... Uh, uh, like a satire, almost. Like, like they're, like not fully invested in it it's like a joke or like not a joke but like they're not serious about it and yeah you know the next when the next cool thing comes out they're gonna like disappear what yeah it's such a dumb way to it's look the at dumbest it. thing in the world and like yeah. they are the most genuine people and they're 19 years old yeah that's <clears throat> i've heard you talk about it before and then i mean i've i've listened to their stuff and then watching him live. Like oh, you get like, it. Yeah, like especially Brian, the lead singer, like yeah. just just young, just obviously loves music, loves hardcore music. Yeah. Just into like his passion and into the whole thing, his, his excitement. It's like, dude, this just this just rules. Yeah, they're and then ta- awesome. and then talking to him afterwards and 
he, he knows stats of how many shows they played with you guys this year. Yeah. And he has like a notebook. He has he knows every place they've ever played. Like to, yeah, to me like that like I'm sold. Like that's yeah. you know what I mean. And it's, it's so cool. I don't know. This makes might maybe sound we- like a weirdo, but like now, like I said, I listened to them before, but now after seeing them live. And like after hearing stuff like that, now when I listen to it, it almost sounds completely different. Oh like yeah, it sounds amazing. Dude, it happens. Same, all thing, the time happened, same thing happened with Twitching Tongues. Like I, yeah, I listened yeah. to Collins' band before. Yeah. And I thought it was good, but then when we went and saw him, now yeah. I listen. I'm just like, it makes it just total sense. Way better. Yeah. yeah, it's insane. And you get it. I think that's like, it was funny. We recorded a record with a dude. Um, um, I don't want to name his name because I feel like I always beat like talk shit about him. Um, but I love him. It's just not my kind of guy gotcha. to work with. You know what gotcha. I mean? Um, so we did like a record with a guy and, and you know, he would like tell me how every time I die was supposed to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I write this it's shit. Tough, how yeah. are you telling me how to be me? Uh huh. You know, like, fuck you, man. You know? Um, and he never saw us live. Oh, and then terrific. We did the record and then the record comes out and it's whatever it is, what it is. And then, um, he, you know, seen us like the next year and, and like came up to us after and was like, holy shit. Like, I get it now. Yeah. I understand your Kind of like your dad with the wrestling show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah My dad was real hyped on the wrestling show. <laughs> Were you in the locker room when it ended? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I get it yeah. now. And now I get it. I get, yeah. I get it. I see what it you guys sense. are doing. He's like, he's like, you did an amazing job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, thank you for your performance. We just like we had just gone out to dinner for Andy's fortieth like three days before, and he met Laura and like and like and then he's like, man, did you see her out there? And she's a fucking vegan. Like, how does she yeah, do yeah. that? Like, it's gonna be different. <laughs> yeah, she's vegan. Yeah, how does she do that? Being a vegan. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're impaired. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you're, you're missing an arm or something. Yeah. And then what was it? Then yeah. Then uh, Ring told me this, and you, I think you did too. Like, you, you went to the promoter Chris Ring and was like. This is it, man. I get it. Me and you, we're gonna we're gonna get into this wrestling thing. We're gonna run wrestling shows. That's it, Frank Williams, <laughs> big promoter, retired the retired machinist. Yeah, <laughs> goes straight into wrestling business. <laughs> straight into wrestling promoter. Yeah, <laughs> he's, <laughs> so he's the next. Uh, I was gonna say Bill Barons or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what I was gonna say there. <laughs> I was going to try to bring up like an old promoter. That's what I was, all, I was trying to think. People of always tell you like that uh, Ghoulis guy. <laughs> He's the next Nick Ghoulis. <laughs> He's going to run this territory. <laughs> um, uh, that makes me Greg Gagne probably. There you go, Greg Gagne. <laughs> yeah, he's Vern Gagne. I'm Greg Gagne. The son, yeah. <laughs> he's going to book you as champion. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, 18 Visions was joke, no joke too, man. Yeah, they're perfect, man. That's my, that's my first time seeing them live. So yeah. It was a big deal. That like, was like, uh, which is a big deal for us because we were just... We like came up with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that you, was like we same time period. Like we Well the story you like uh we did Alicia's thing and I didn't the story you told about their bass player, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Mick died and uh he died it's been it's been I think eight years, nine years. Yeah. And they just play the tracks. Years, and they just play the tracks. So with like they don't have stage. a bass player because he just means he meant the world to Too them. Much. Yeah. yeah. And uh yeah, just made sense to like just do it that way. Yeah, and they sound fucking awesome, dude. They're like, I think Mitch said this too. Their their set list was stellar. Yeah, like what man? I got to see one song. <laughs> <laughs> so that one song was rocking. <laughs> it, it was a good one. Uh, yeah, they 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 tore. Yeah, it up. they're great. Um, Pup is amazing. Like I I like. It's funny because like in the context of watching live music, like I came up through punk and hardcore and like. Seeing a band of like a different style is always a little weird for me. Yeah, you know, like a, not something that's not heavy. I think it's I think it's cool though for variety on the show. I think so too. You know, if every you band is to. heavy, yeah, you have to. And much. like, it's funny because like you know the heavy kids are going to be like, oh man, yeah, and then those dudes are going to be like, oh man, you know, but the like, heavy stuff. Everybody was into it. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, uh, Vane, that band Vane oof. is insane. Yeah, man. they're uh, they are heavy just duty, fucking insane. And I'm like. I just want to go on every like they. I want them to do this. I want them to be the, them to be the new knock loose to me. Like yeah. we play sixty nine shows. With them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see them every day. We can't. Uh, we can't get Reggie from the full effect on here fast enough. Oh my god! <laughs> it's gonna Yo, be amazing. He is gonna be great. We ha- we're gonna have. Yeah, we're gonna th- have him on the on the podcast. I think you were there when Alicia said they did the interview with him. Yeah, and when they sat down with him, he was just talking. They couldn't get him to stop talking yeah. to start the interview. So they just so started. Her dad just started rolling and they yeah. just went from there. They literally Amazing. just couldn't get a break in there. He's so <laughs> he good. He told, 
it was that he told me, you know, he was telling me how he lives in Buffalo now, invited me over for dinner instantly, mm-hmm. uh, had the same conversation with Puff, invited Puff over to play video games. <laughs> that, Can you that, imagine that, <laughs> Legion? <laughs> Wow. We're all going. Like, we're, we got to go. Yeah. And then he was telling me how he got up at 5 a.m. that morning to make cookies. He had invited me into his dressing room. He had, like, yeah. a whole spread of cookies. Yeah. And then his big thing was, like, his like his girl knows somebody who was in, like, a plowing business, and he yeah. wanted to start plowing. <laughs> but his, his girl was telling him to concentrate on music and touring. Yeah. And he was like, I don't got nothing else to do at 5 a.m. I'll just, you know, I'll put the thing down. I'll just plow. Like, yeah. so he got real into plowing for Great. a bit. <laughs> Hey, something Buffalo needs. <laughs> right. He's from, he lives in Buffalo now, man. Yeah, he, no more Kansas City he's for him. Pretty, pretty ecstatic about it. He's great. We're gonna get him on the podcast though, because he lives here now. So yeah, it's, it's gonna, insane. It's gonna be he amazing. He played in like, he played in Get Up Kids. He played in Reggie and the Full Effect, and Cole. then the band I'm most stoked about. He played drums yeah. in Coalesce, and yeah. that was like, no Coalesce, no Every Time I Die. That's sweet. Straight up. Yeah. So that's that's the real deal. Yeah. Catering um, catering was tight. Yeah. Oh, bring, fuck yeah. If I feel bad bringing it up, you didn't yeah, have it. Yeah, thanks, any. man. Yeah. Shit, there you I go. Forgot. Just slap me right in the face. I, I hadn't, I just didn't think that day. Like, my brain was just shut off from, like, Food. actually living. Yeah. Anything you need to survive. Yeah. And, like, before I wrestled, I ate, like, two of these little chicken things that were literally the size of my finger. Uh-huh. And then I went to go eat dinner, and, like, they were just pulling the trays out at the time, mm-hmm. filled with food. Yeah. And I was like, hey, is there any chance I can get, like, just I, get a plate? I was there, yeah. <laughs> you can tell a story, you know. And well, then, but it was like, I think it was 8 o'clock. They cut it off at 8 o'clock. It was, it was about like 8.03 8 or something, yeah. yeah. And I was like, hey, man, can I get some of that food? And the guy goes, nah, man, they said 8 o'clock. I was like, well, is it evaporating? Yeah, did it disappear? And he was like, nah, sorry, man, I can't do it at 8 o'clock. And I was like, I paid for it. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, yeah, sorry, dude. Straight up, everybody here is to see me. So. I paid for that. Yeah. Like, literally paid for that. Uh-huh. Yeah. That and, like, sucks. that was the thing. Ring put that on me. He was like, hey, uh, no, nah, I didn't pay for it, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Ring was only going to do one catering Oh, catering, day. but because they, they did the lunch and yeah. dinner. Yeah, and he was like, what do you think, man? Do you think we should feed the wrestlers, too? I was like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, if you perform on the show, you, you eat. Yeah. And he was like, done. That was, I put it in my speech for the wrestling, was like, yeah. guys, we got, we don't, we not only have catering, we have double catering, and there's showers here. We yeah. Fuck, we fucking made it. Pretty much. So I almost cried the night before. Yeah. When we were doing the talk around the ring. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember we your voice, your voice cracked a couple times. I thought it was coming. Almost cried in the locker room. Uh-huh. And then after we got done playing, yeah. Josh Barnett grabbed me and he was like, I just want you to know you're one of my best friends. <laughs> I love everything that you do. Yeah. I love you. This was seriously the coolest thing I've ever done. Got really real. I really need to do this every year. Like, just hugging me and doing it, and he just knew he could get me, and I just started crying. Yeah. And I was in my underwear. You really, you really, picked, a, in really my, picked a spot. Yeah, I yeah. was in my underwear, and I was like, dude, fuck you, man. And I, like, shoved him, <laughs> and then there was this weird little hallway, and I just walked away in my underwear. And, like, I think Bill Carr was there. It was just Bill Carr, me, and and, jo- uh, and, and uh, Josh. Oh, did they see you break down? And I just, yeah, they were... Like, <laughs> Bill saw me start crying. Yeah, like, I didn't know that. While I was hugging Josh, I was like crying. <laughs> I can't wait to like, text him. Fuck, you knew this, and I like I I didn't. I just walked away, but I was in my underwear when I walked away and just had to look ridiculous, <laughs> yeah, like, like just wandering away, bubbling like, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then went outside and I just sat there and like took pictures with kids for yeah. like two hours. That was super cool. You did in that. my underwear. Yeah. Well, like uh, to rewind, you guys uh, to rewind. It wasn't I did, even like that. Yeah. Wasn't a roll of <laughs> tums. In my underwear, <laughs> and it was not a triple A battery. If that's what you're wondering, <laughs> it was like I didn't even think it was like halfway through your set, and Ricky Shane Page was like, "Yo, Andy split his pants. Is he wearing like red and blue underwear?" <laughs> I, was like, I think so, dude. I, like, jumped, I know what your underwear like, third is. Third song, I jumped. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't gone. like a big split. It was like basically from like your crotch, like yeah. halfway down. Well, there your was leg. like a time Dan, I could see Dan like looking, like watching me. I had my foot up on the on the drum fill, uh-huh. and I just reached down and went. <laughs> And just ripped it even more. <laughs> like it was ripped all the way down my leg. Here we go. And just underwear sticking out, running yeah. around. So then, you, yeah. So then, after the show, you just went full go. Yeah, just I just got rid of them. Decided to throw a two hundred dollar pair of like Adidas. NMDs yep. in the crowd. See ya. Pants, shirt. And then I was in my underwear. When the what we were just looking at when. When did you scream? When did you scream into the mic stand that didn't have a microphone? I, okay, on? so during the chorus of that. Werewolf, yeah, 
Keith like sings and I always go to the mic stand and I just pretend <laughs> I'm like singing. <laughs> And it's just an empty mic stand. Fuck, I heard and Werewolf. I just, and yeah. I remember where I was. I couldn't see very well, so I didn't catch it. The dan and dan 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 Like that part, I yeah. always pretend I'm like singing. He needs a brother needs a little backup. Yeah, man, exactly. You know? But it's not backup. real backup. <laughs> yeah. It's a great pick. Yeah. It's a really good one. Because it never... I've, uh, people have taken pictures of me by the mic stand, but never like me singing into it. Well, the best part is that you look dead. It doesn't <laughs> even look like you're kidding around. You look dead serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> an invisible mic. And then you, like, you kind of look at the picture for a second. You're like, oh, there's no microphone there. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a stand. Well, he's doing a really good job. Yeah. Does Maybe. he know the mics? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I told you and Mitch, I really... I really back the move of no uh, no encore and Mitch just yeah. destroying his base and starting on fire. One of my favorite sweet. things ever is how Converge does things. So Converge will come out on stage and go, we are a punk band from Boston, Massachusetts. And then they just start playing. Just start ripping. And then they don't do encores. And the reason why they don't do encores is they say, we're a punk band. Punk bands don't do encores. Yeah. And I feel the same it's way. pretty tight. One time in South Carolina... We played, we opened with Werewolf, uh-huh. then did it as an encore, Yeah, and they kept asking for songs, so we just played it again, and then played it again. We played it four times. Oh, really? Yeah. That was... As that, a joke. When I, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great joke. Yeah. I, uh, I remember when I first started going to shows, like seeing, like, I, like, you know, the show ended, and then I was like, like, everybody's sticking around, and obviously wants them to come back out. And then when I, when I just realized, like, a lot of encores are, like, at work, like, they're planned, yeah. it kind of, like, killed, I was like, oh, that's kind of yeah. lame, you know what I mean? Like, And it's always like, well, what do we do for an encore? Yeah. It's like, what? The songs are written on the paper. Yeah, like, how, yeah. like you know, I, I, I don't know. The I'm worst so, is I'm such this. an organic person. Like, I'm going to say like, this. It'd be cool to do an encore if they really want it. Don't do it yeah, if it's not Sometimes you do. Like, I mean, like, um, <laughs> that bowling alley show that I talk about in the UK. Yeah. Like, that show was so fucking electric Mm -hmm. that, like, you know, 1,200 people stayed there and just stayed there and stayed there. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were, like, refusing to leave. Yeah. So it's like, all right, you got to give them one more. What are you going to do? They're asking for one more. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah, sometimes you got to just do it, and that's organic as hell. I think that's what an encore is. And I think that's fucking cool. You know, they ask for one more song, you play one song. Yeah. One more song. Or sometimes, yeah, they ask for one more song, and it's like, you know what? Like, keep them wanting. Yeah. You know, like Little, that show was so kick keep ass. Them, keep them more. more. Keep them wanting more. Yeah, then they'll come back. Um, yeah, I always thought it was like a little weird when you see more than just the set list written down uh-huh. on the set list. Yeah. Sometimes you get like, like a space and then yeah. two more songs or something. Well, not even that. It's like, so sometimes we'll we'll throw like a cue in there that's like two clicks, which means like two stick clicks, yeah, the song just, starts um, because the song before it, is you know we like hold a note you know what yep. i mean so it's like wait for the band and the song go. ends yeah. you know what i mean um just as a cue but there's never like information on there you well, know what i mean sometimes you'll see three songs talk about new record uh yeah four songs talk about the city Eesh. you know what i mean so like yeah. this fucking brain dead fuck who's supposed to be on fire yeah. like essentially a lead singer is supposed to be rick flair yep you should be able to cut a promo on the spot about yep. anything improv you know what I mean like someone should be able to if you're you're playing to a crowd and there's a guy dressed like a banana mm-hmm. you like talk about the banana yeah you know what I mean but like they're giving you to when you. I saw you guys at Warp Tour in Keith uh, in Cleveland and there was like there was a Heath Ledger joker in the crowd yeah. there was a fucking Jack Nicholson joker yeah. and he like made great jokes about yeah. it and, and then, it's like it's easy they were like crowd it was perfect the crowd is always gonna give you the things you should talk about yes and they shouldn't talk about anything else because they're not in on the inside joke. No. Like, so, like, they're the inside joke. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like, if something like that happens, you can point that out and then say it. I always thought that was, like, pretty lame. Like, and, like, I feel like Warp Tour, I remember, like, R- Wage War, um, young band from Florida, great kids. And, you know, uh, during their set, they would, like, talk about the same things everybody else talked about. Yeah. So it was like, all right, guys, if you guys need suicide awareness, go over here to this table. Yeah. yeah because everybody would say it. Hey, guys, if you're depressed, I'm depressed, too. You know, yeah. like, stuff like that. And it's like, guys, like, you're literally just looking at what other bands are doing, and mm-hmm. you're saying that. And I remember, like, going up to them and being like, you don't have to do that. Yeah. You don't yeah, have to yeah. talk it's about not, any of that shit. Like, it's not system. like... The first day of Warp Tour, there's a guy saying, like, all right, at this point, you have to talk about the suicide guy, and you have to talk about this, and it's like, 
No. Like, they have a booth, and, like, if it's a thing where, like, they're, like, pushing your band, yeah. help them. Uh-huh. But they have a booth, and people can see it, yep. and it's okay. And I know that sounds really harsh, but it's, like, if you only get 35 minutes, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You're there for and, your and band. Like, and you said everybody else is pushing it, too. Yeah. Like, you know, don't feel like you have to. Yeah, you don't have to feel like you have to. Yes, if it is something that you're affected by, yeah, like, say it. Exactly. But, like, you don't have to go for the cheap pops. Yeah, there you go. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's exactly it. Like, where it is. The crowd's there, and they're hungry for you. Yes. You know what I mean? And, like, the fucking 12 bands before you just said the same thing. I can't I can't remember who it was. And then they stopped doing it. Like, just to say that. That's good. You know, they, they like, they... Oh, young guys talk about advice. themselves, yeah. yeah. And it's 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 and it so- sounds really harsh, but like every time I die, it's just never been the band that's like, hey, well, today we're talking about suicide, tomorrow we're talking about this, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's just like more, it is a problem, more, everybody knows it's a problem. The guy's over there, and if it if you want to know, I'll be standing there, yeah, talking about it mm-hmm. on that platform, <laughs> yeah, 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 not yeah. here, exactly, where we have 35 minutes, yeah. This is my band playing now, yeah. Um, who was it? Someone said they saw uh, Tony Bennett, the singer. Yeah. Um, they saw him like warming up and like, like nobody, like he's just in a room like, doing like a sound check or something like that. Yeah. And like, there's no people there. And like, he was do like, while he was like singing the songs, he was like, Hey, you look great tonight, everybody. Like he like, yeah. he practices those lines too. Like, like, uh, like that's great. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. It's all part of the act. <laughs> like he was doing it in front of no, <laughs> that might be because like, there's, he might have like a track or something like that going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like something might be there and like I, that I get like, and it's, that's kind of weird too is like, like 18 visions runs a track. Mm-hmm. So that has to be timed. Oh yeah. So like the drummers on a, on a, um, uh, t- yeah, time, um, a metronome like the whole time. Oh, okay. Because if he misses a cue, then the bass is off. Yep. The whole show is off. Yeah. But they did it organically where it doesn't sound like they're on a click. Uh, like, you know what I mean? I couldn't like, tell. But yeah. they have to be because of the bass. You know yeah, what I mean? which is crazy because you cannot tell. Yeah, yeah. And that's, they figured out a fucking organic way to do it, and that's fucking awesome. Yes. A lot of times, there's not organic things where, like, bands use tracks, and it's like, you only have one minute here. What can you say in a minute? Yeah. Well, I'll put over the new record. Yeah. I'll do this. It's like, no that's, thanks, man. I, I heard Rob Zombie talk about that before. Yeah, like some bands, not only do they play, they play the same set list, Every show, yeah, the same so banter boring, every dude. show. I saw I, in St. Clown Pass when <laughs> I was in high school. <laughs> and they played. Yeah. I saw him in Buffalo, and then we went to go see him somewhere else. And that was one of the first times I saw that too. I was like, "Oh, it's the same banter." Yep. And like, just they're just inserting this town's name. Yep. And it's the same shit. Yep. Which whatever. a lot of bands do that. Yeah, I believe it. 100%. It's pretty sad. Yeah. Um, Alkaline Trio. Huh? Definitely does not. I remember like it's great. I wasn't that into that band. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about them. Yeah. And then we did a warp tour with them and just I was like ah, I'm going to go check these guys out. I think like Matt Stanky, one of my favorite dudes that works for a band. Yeah. Uh he's a guitar tech uh for City and Color now. Yeah. Um he was working for Elk Country and I was like oh, I'm going to go see Matt. And then like got floored. Like I was like this band is fucking awesome. Yeah, they They're rip. amazing. They kicked ass, so then the next day I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go watch Elk Country. They played a completely different set than they did the night before. On Warped Tour? And then That's great. I watched them the third day. They played the same. They played a different set than they did the last two nights. Yeah. I mean, they just literally changed up. Some nights they were doing a No Use for uh, yeah, no use for a Name or No... Yeah. No Use for a Name's a band, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think if it was that. Oh, No Means No. Oh, okay. They did a No Means No cover, yeah. which was insane. Yeah. Like, it, it was just like, they were fucking perfect, and then... To me, to me that just, like, makes it seem like, like we were talking about with Knock Loose, like, passion stuff. Yeah. Like, to, it's just, you know, they just, they love what they do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, like I say, just with wrestling, like, I can't... You know, the, guy, the guys who have the I don't want to be here attitude, I, I don't have time for this weekend, to get the fuck out of my face. That's talk. And I know, like, I put him over all the time because he's one of my good friends. But, yeah. like, Big Nate, yeah. uh, Brody King. Oh, yeah. It was just stoked to wrestle. Yeah. And, like, the first night at the and, and Saturday, there was, like, a mishap with a dive. Uh-huh. And he does, like, a huge dive where he yeah. does a flip over. And the guy's massive. Exactly. So, like, it always is a big reaction. And he's going against, he's going against Blackwood. Yep. And Blackwood needed some help. And just like the help wasn't just there. didn't happen, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And that's not like burying anyone. Uh-huh. It's just like 
They just weren't around. Yeah. And like so this dive got botched. Yeah. And like Nate kind of squashed himself and it really is scary to watch. Yeah. Like it's the fact that it turned out the way it did okay. and not way worse. Holy fuck, yeah. man. Because there was uh, a guardrail involved. He fucking just, basically blasted his back of his neck on, on the I think it missed. It looked like he hit it, but I mean, yeah, yeah. If it whatever. Yeah, I mean yeah, two more still, inches. It could have been terrible. Yeah. So literally, like after the match, you know, about an hour later. He just comes up to me and goes, I got to get that one back. Yeah. And we were tagging the next day in Smash. And yeah. that was the first thing I just, I told Scotty, I was like, let him, we got to get him this dive. Yeah. Let him just have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'll eat it. I don't care. Yeah. And, and I. And you, and you did. I heard it. It's like a he, nice, <laughs> nice boot to the back of the head. <laughs> that is uh, two size 15s <laughs> just dead into the brain stem. Yeah, 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 that real soft part of your head back there. <laughs> Just hit me dead in the back of the neck. And, but whatever. You know what I mean? It looked awesome. The reaction was huge. Oh, sweet. That's my guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'll do that for him 100 times out of 100. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, it was just, you know, that was like yesterday was like, he was he was so bummed. He's like, oh, the Smash guys were there and they saw that. Yeah, he literally, he was like, they're probably bummed. They have me booked. It was like, yeah. I don't mean, Nate, I don't think so. But he, you know what he I'm really, saying? Yeah, like, he really took it like hard. But like the passion that that But yeah, it's because he cares. Yeah. He really gives a shit. And like, that was it. And he then wants then to come back. He wants to wrestle more. Yeah. And like, we're driving up to Toronto and I was like, literally, you and Scotty just go with it. Uh huh. Call the match and I'll do whatever you fucking need me to do. Yeah. I'm yours today. Yeah. Like, you literally use me as clay and like, just do all your cool shit, do everything you can. And then they did it, and it was awesome. He just, yeah, he just has such a presence. I did two things the entire match. It was great. <laughs> well, your arm, your arm is also hanging off your yeah. shoulder. So I, didn't I got a, I got a weak, I got a weak shoulder right now. <laughs> and it's just add that to the list of things that I turned forty in. Then. <laughs> the funniest part, it was off your own offensive maneuver. <laughs> yeah, I threw a lariat, like my big lariat, my big ripcord lariat, uh -huh. and uh, something happened to my shoulder. Tore something in my shoulder. Yeah, ripped yeah. it up. You got some. You just got some PT done though. Yeah. So I started going to PT at this place called Mustache Fitness, and uh, I'm going to start going with this dude, Matt Veronica, his name is. He used to work for the Bills, and he's going to put me through some PT work two times a week. Yeah, brother brother Matt Vincent went to go see him while he was in town. Yeah. And put him over, so we went, Said he was awesome. we went and checked him out. Yeah. And the they, gym is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, as far as like a, a powerlifting gym, it's, yeah. it, they got everything you need. Yeah. Um, um, I was going to say, like, for, for me with the wrestling show, um. I don't like. I almost felt bad. Like, uh, like you were the semi-main event. I was the main event, and that's when the crowd was what we wanted. Mm -hmm. Like that's it was filled. They were rocking, and I, that almost made me feel bad. I was like, I just, I just wish this would have been there the whole for every match. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they, I mean, it did as like I, I, I did watch a lot of the show live, and like every time I went out there, it was filling up, filling up, yeah, filling yeah. up, filling up. But you, obviously, I mean, obviously, then when you came on, that was you know. Do you think me going on like in the middle would have helped? I don't know. I, I like that's the that was the worry was just like they're gonna watch you and then everyone's gonna yeah take off and do other shit yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, that that was my idea to put you semi-main. Then we even had you come out on the main event, too. Um, yeah. But, I like, I remember I was – my stress levels were through the roof when the show started, and it was so light. Yeah. Because the doors had just opened a half hour ago. Yeah. Weather was, weather was shitty outside, and, you know, everyone had to check security coming through, so it was taking some time. And when the wrestling show got started, I was like, oh, man, it's, like, real light out there you know what i mean yeah so like my stress was just because i you know we talked about it on the podcast and, I, and in my head i had just envisioned like shows sold out like i knew there wasn't going to be three thousand people watching us all the time but i just had envisioned like you know it's just going to be packed and it's going to be rocking and yeah they haven't seen a lot of wrestling before they're going to go crazy and then you know i mean i got i got that for my match yeah and but the biggest point was uh when me and you hit our big LOD doomsday device. Oh, we did doomsday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you became the referee. One, two, three, big finish. Yeah, my um, show. <laughs> yeah, my show. I'll do what I want. Uh, I just I remember they're like, like taking like taking that in and and like looking around and being like, oh fuck, like this this was what I envisioned. Yeah, like, yeah. it was packed, and I was like, this is just this is fucking cool. So I mean, I'm, I'm glad I got my moment. Yeah, you know what I mean, I feel like shit saying that when other people, of course, had you know they didn't have that perfect crowd but like yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was fucking it was sweet man yeah it was, really it was cool. awesome really like cool. it was amazing i the only, your match uh -huh. you 
you took like a weird DVD oh, off they, of they a table. table it didn't break. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> Ash made a gif of it to rib me. The front, <laughs> like just, really? I just bounced like boing boing. <laughs> I um like so like I'm at that that point where like wa- watching wrestling is at a different. I'm not watching wrestling as like a 15 year old fan anymore. I'm watching wrestling as like a dude who's like studying it. Yeah. Like why people do things yeah. and stuff like that. And I love the fact that, and this is the one thing that I picked up from it was like, Sammy does the DVD. Yep. It doesn't break. Yep. And then he grabs it Instantly. and moves it to another corner. Yeah. And it was like, it was so cool. Cause it was like, all right, we tried that on this corner. Yeah. Fuck it. Now we're doing something different here. He, uh, he, he popped too, because he did the DVD didn't break. Like you said, grab the table, moved it to another corner. He grabbed me and he goes, power bomb. And I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, that's so cool. He, like, he got a kick out But of like, that. you know, and like just move that subtle, like moving it to another corner. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. But I was like, I respect that. It wasn't to like, me, just, it's, it's just like, I start always, over. I always think of it as like, yeah, that's, that's the guy who's done hardcore matches and it just yeah. knows how this shit goes. And yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, that, that corner didn't work. Let's try this one. Yep. And it wasn't because that corner is like super strong no. or anything like it that. It was actually because of the way I, I, I was nervous. Remember when we did uh, Janela Spring Break? Yeah. And we had the door and the fans had to hold it? Yeah. I was just worried that I was going to lean it in the corner and, and it was going to slip. It was going to slip. So I placed it almost too straight up. Yeah, yeah. That's why it didn't break. Yeah. And then when Sammy moved it to the other corner, he angled it more. Yeah. I was just because when I put it in the corner too, like we were doing, we put it in the corner and then we did some more stuff. And I was just worried the moving around was going to make it fall. Yeah. Not the case. I thought of a match for next year <laughs> yeah. that I want to do, uh-huh. but it can't happen. <laughs> what is it? Because I feel like Christmas show, I have to do pythons. Uh-huh. Like, I can't do Butcher yeah. and the Blade. Uh-huh. Obviously, I want to do Butcher and the Blade. It's all good. I mean, I also want to do pythons, too. But yeah. um, if we did Butcher and the Blade versus Jimmy Havoc and Clint. Clint uh, oh, yeah. Because Clint was talking Clint about Margera, it. Yeah. It would be fucking awesome. Yeah. Like a hardcore match would be awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, because yeah, like you said, it would be cool because Clint was talking about bringing us over there. Yeah. But if we were able to do it first and get those guys yeah. here. Because like what well, you said, Jimmy Havoc, because he basically, he, yeah, we can get him because. 100% Jimmy Havoc's going to be on the Christmas show next Well, because he comes in town for uh, Cage of Death. Cage of Death, yeah. So he just has to stay a little longer. Yeah. You know, and that's all it takes. So there you go. Jimmy Havoc, first guy booked yeah. for next year. <laughs> got, you got every, t- every time I die and Jimmy, and Jimmy Havoc, Havoc, we're all set. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> Um, Ticket sales. So, Jimmy, if you're listening to this or this makes his way to Jimmy, yeah, you're, you're, you're on, you're booked. You're in, bud. You're on the show. <laughs> but it was like, uh, it was really cool. Like, I watched the whole show last night and just seeing the eight man tag from Grapplers Anonymous. Like, yeah. that's, that's the biggest show a lot of those guys have done so far. Yeah. And just to see them like absorb that crowd and like, yeah. just watching Puff be inst- instantly over. Instantly. I saw a great, yeah, Puff D. Rhodes. <laughs> He's always going to be Puffy Rhodes. He gets yeah. over wherever he goes. <laughs> Fucking kid. Hangs out with Matt Vincent for 24 hours. He's magic. Yeah, I, I, like that was another thing. Bro, yeah, was brother Matt. That. Yeah. It was just like, I I had shit to do on I remember it, was, it was Friday. It was the day yeah. before. I felt the same way. And I had like, I you mean, had I was- band practice. I had band practice. We just we had to move into a new uh, spot, like a yeah. new practice spot. Yep. Practiced four new songs. Then had to go set up at the at Riverworks. Yep. Then had to wait for the like the 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 ring to go. Yeah. Like and got that done. Then I'm cutting like I'm doing a uh, an interview with Boulevard Bullies, uh, and then in the middle of it I'm getting this call over and over again. It's like holy shit I'm gonna be home by midnight. This is amazing. And then I start getting this call, <laughs> and it's a call and it's a call and it's going off in my thing while I'm doing this 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 interview. And I'm like God damn. So I pull my phone out, which is really lame when you're doing an interview. Yeah. And I look and I'm like. Oh, dude. And it's just a picture of a car in a ditch. And Nate took a nosedive. And Nate, his wife, and Matt <laughs> Vincent nose dove just into a ditch. Like the abyss. Literally behind their hotel. It looked like, oh, yeah. you know what it looked like? It looked like Tremors. Remember Tremors yeah, yeah, yeah. where it pulls a car under you? I wish it was. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. I wish my friends didn't exist anymore because of Tremors. <laughs> a tremor worm. But that's yeah. when like, the headlights and the yeah. car turns up, so that's what it looked like. But like in a snowbank. It was like a total honest mistake, too. Like, yeah. Just the road was plowed. The- also, he lives in California, so it's not like yeah, he's he a doesn't drive in professional snow, snow driver. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he just took a left, and he thought it was part of the... The parking lot, <laughs> and it was case. not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at one o'clock in the morning, and he doesn't have AAA, so he calls me. He's like, "Dude, can you come 
do this. I don't have AAA. Yeah. So then I had to like wait for him, and I didn't get home until 4 a.m. <sighs> had, had to be back at sound check for had eight. Had to be at seven. Like oh. I got so I got up at seven. You had to be there at eight. At eight, and uh, that was a long day. I'm still recovering right now. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, Bang is helping though. Um. No, but yeah. So Puff. Yeah, like uh, like it's just Matt. You know, you Brown the Grappler. Like he saw everything. Like, yeah. Brown the Grappler's anonymous for two days of wrestling training. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, like you said, Friday you had band practice. And I, when I caught wind of that, I was like. Oh she like I knew you had practice she and everything that. that day and it was just like I already knew what I had to do that day and I like was trying my damnedest not to do any more because yeah. I just wanted to be able to do my shit. And then I was like shit and like literally, yeah, just Matt and Vincent and Puff all day hanging it was out. Awesome. Man, yeah, it was just You like went to the violent two peas in the pod. Yeah, yeah pop, pop up, up shop. shop. Yeah. Like, it was awesome. Like yeah. it just like total just like a buddy cop movie. Yeah, just like like you said, just to credit it, like Puff gets over anywhere with anybody, and Matt Vincent just being the chillest dude on the face yeah. of the planet. Like, like Dave Christ, I got a text today, just like love. I love Puff. <laughs> like yeah. everybody loves the kid. Yeah. Like, I mean, how can you not? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's fucking amazing. Uh-huh. Um, oh, fuck the tremors thing made me think of something, or the uh, Nate crashing. I don't know. Yeah, but we got we got uh, where did we go to eat with them the night before Mooney's? Yeah, we went to Mooney's. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Hey, we got them chicken wings. We got yeah. them like, stick mac and Matt cheese. Matt ate chicken wings every day he was here. <laughs> <laughs> every single Paleo day. Paleo brother getting yeah. in that protein and fats. <laughs> just getting those chicken wings. Yeah, keep them going. He left them in my car the first night. My car just smelled like a weird <laughs> chicken wing fart. <laughs> I, like, I was happy. I don't think you were there at the end. Not the end of the rest. At the end of the night, like after it was over, um, I was able to... Get a box of charbecued wings for the oh. for the locker room. Shit, Every, like yeah. everybody wasn't there, but like Bill yeah. Carr, Bar- uh, Barnett, Thatcher, like hell yeah, they got to get like a big box of wings and because charbecued wings are the best chicken. They're so good on the planet Earth. I'm gonna say this right now, uh, just to go back to Matt Vincent. Uh-huh. I just remembered. Yeah, we he had him on the podcast. Hopefully, you guys listened to him. Uh-huh. Um, we we had a really good tug talk that night. Yeah. <laughs> Like a really good shit talk. talk. Like, he, when he wrote me about it, and I was like, "Yeah, man, shit talk and tug talk." <laughs> it was pretty yeah. much all it was. Yeah. So we had we had a really good tug talk on the Matt Vincent episode. So when I went there the the morning before, or the morning the morning after, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. on Thursday, yeah, I get into his room, yeah. and there's just a lone, <laughs> tiny towel. He told me this story by the TV, yeah. and I was like. Tug time. Hey, man, what's there that lonely is. towel on the floor? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you kill someone in Buffalo, the DNA is right there. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, be careful when you're it's, here. <laughs> it's over, bud. <laughs> yeah. Because there's DNA all over this room right now. <laughs> it's like, and he was like, oh, like, yeah. It's like CSI in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tug time was real with Matt Vincent. Yeah. And then we got uh that was, I'm really glad. I could tell he really wanted to do that. I'm glad we got to get his podcast too. Yeah, we did his podcast at the worst time possible. Oh, uh, like 12. That was basically like to wrap up. To yeah. me, that was like the wrap up of the whole week. Yeah, it was, it that was, was the whole shebang. We did Saturday, then we did the Smash Show Sunday. Literally drove home from Toronto, got home at like midnight, and went to his hotel room and did a podcast. Until 3.30. Yeah, I went to bed at 5.30 then. Yeah, got home at 4. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was cool though. It was super cool. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. Um, the uh, it's kind of weird not to like we have stuff to talk about, but like there's almost so much. No, but there's like space. almost like nothing though. Like there's no stress in our lives right now. No, like like they, we're well, just like yeah, you, you we said, have one year to get stressed again. Yeah, like you said, like your brain felt like a million bucks today because yeah. the stress is gone. Yeah, and I, I've been riding high for yes, yeah, I mean since the show. Like yeah, I, I told Laura like the day. Like I said, you know, the day the day of the show was stressful, but like but you know what, Laura was the chain of events that made me cry in my car. <laughs> she was the first, yeah, because like what? I got in my car and she just sent me a text message that says like you and Pepper deserve this so much, and it was just a heart, and I just started crying. <laughs> so it was like Laura it's was cool. like, it's cool she says that to you and not me. <laughs> the, <laughs> I didn't get any of that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah the pin got pulled, and it was just like, God damn it, Laura. Yeah. And I started crying. That was that was the that was the pin getting pulled. I gotta make sure I tell her that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, Nate told me a funny story. I did remember seeing like Laura literally in her street clothes, like 
was like front row for our match. Like she yeah, just yeah. sat at the guardrail and she was like, I could hear her like screaming the whole time. And um, I think Nate's wife said to her, Nate, Nate's wife was like, Emily, she was like, uh, she was like, Hey, who's, there's like a, a really attractive girl like going crazy for, yeah. for Jesse. And, you, it's a, and Nate was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's his wife. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. She literally thought I was just some chick that was yeah, like yeah. super into me in my match. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Whoa, he's going home with her tonight. <laughs> he's like, oh, he yeah, is. I think he's in. You should probably let him know. That <laughs> <laughs> Do they have each other's numbers? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There was like so many people from around the world were there too. And I, I mean, dude, yeah. The, like, I mean, I guess starting small, like, yeah, a lot of people came down from Canada. Uh, yeah. I remember someone tweeted us driving in from North Carolina. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, like you said, all the fans from the UK, Australia. Yeah. Well, yeah. you, I mean, I mean, and then like you being the brother that you are, you yeah. just told me like you went to breakfast yeah. with a bunch of them. Uh, yeah. Monday. Yeah. On yeah. Monday. Yeah. Yesterday yeah, yeah. morning. It's cool. They, they stuck they got to stick around and see the city. Yeah, and, and they like just basically messaged me and said, "Hey, we're going to eat at Panos." Yeah, and then I like showed up and ate with them. And it's stuff, amazing. And it was like, yeah, like, it was. Like, I mean, really like, cool. I mean, I don't know. It's it's like it's. I guess it's the least you could do. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, honestly, like like we 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 purposely put the the ticket sale really cheap. Yeah, for this because it is a long day. Yes, you know what I mean. And you have to like kind of like anytime. There's like some sort of shenanigan pulled. It's just going in the band's pocket. Uh, what do you mean? Like meaning like, oh hey, you know we got a we got a hundred and twenty dollars. It's a hundred and twenty dollars for this thing, and like, you know what I mean? Like some bands will charge like upsell these tickets because of this crazy experience. Oh yeah, and it's just like, well fuck you, man. It's a wrestling show. It's a rock show. Yep. It's a it's ice skating. Why the fuck are you trying to put money in my in a, pocket? Yeah, you know what I mean? Ve- like a great venue in our hometown. And I understand that. Like I understand the fact that like obviously we wouldn't have done it if we didn't think we could afford to do it. Yeah. And we made the money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so like by you guys buying tickets, that paid for the whole show. Exactly. And then there was a little bit left over to like give ourselves a little like, wow, this is a four days from hell that we just dealt with. Yeah. And like that's I said it on um, on Matt's podcast. It's like it's four days. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna live hopefully until I'm really old. Yeah. And it's only four days. Exactly. And like I've spent four days like masturbating to uh, yeah doing, like doing nothing worse shit. You know what I mean? Like horrible yeah. shit. You know what I mean? So it's like. For four days straight, I just have to go as hard as I can. I have to run my engine at the highest RPMs. But the, the, you know, and it's not like you, not like you're working at a fucking factory. Like you're no, doing, I, you're you doing know, something you love. And I'm with my friends, and like that's the thing is like it's at all times it's just stress. And yeah. I know that sounds crazy because stress kills people. Yeah, but like true, I handle stress okay, uh-huh. and no, I know yeah, I do. And yes. it's like. If I have to just be awake for two hours the next four days, yeah, whatever, as I'll as, get to sleep. For me, it's like yeah, as long as you're doing something you love. I was just gonna say yeah. that a second ago, like, now, nah, like I told Laura, like Saturday, Sunday, like that was like I, I, lately I've, I've been feeling like shit when I wake up in the morning. Yeah, but like Saturday, Sunday, like going on no sleep, I felt that's the most alive I felt in like, yeah. a while. It was fucking awesome. And that's, I mean, literally, dude, like, like that's, I couldn't like a Saturday, I couldn't wait to get to the venue. Like, yeah, I was just stoked. Stress is like one of those things, and it's even if it's like but good the, stress, it's like, like Carl Anderson calls it good stress all the time. Yeah, it's good stress, and it's, it's like it's good when you wake up difference. and you're just like, wow, that was cool. Yeah, and then when it, and then when it's over, like especially when it goes off, like it goes off without a hitch. Like, yeah, fuck, man, that's like the highest of the high. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't know if if you guys follow me on Insta, if you hear this and you're following me on social media, is like I'm not a guy that like records in the moment. Like I'd rather live in the, moment, in the moment instead of like recording in the moment. Yeah, that fuck. Can I cut you off one? Second? No, go ahead. Another thing, me and Laura said this about Matt was uh, I know we goofed around about it on the podcast. Like we 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 didn't really we didn't expose like what Matt does for a living. We just kind of kept everybody guessing. Yeah, but like yeah, I mean Matt has a YouTube channel with I think it's like twenty five thousand subscribers or something like yeah. that. He's got a he's got a clothing brand. Um, he's got he's you know he's in the fitness industry like. He does a lot of good shit. I totally forgot what I was going to say with this. Oh, um, 
like his and his Instagram, like uh, the in, the Instagram stories. Yeah. Like if you click, on, like you know, some people you click on, and it's just like a whole bunch of little dots because he has yeah. like twenty videos. I never saw him once, like walking around with like those obnoxious yeah, people yeah. walking around, like yeah. talking into a cell phone. Like he took tons of footage. He did. He made. He sent me this really cool video he took yesterday of uh, the ring being set up. But yeah. you put it in like fast motion. Oh, Jesus. So the whole ring, like you just see people walking by really fast and the yeah. ring coming up. I didn't even know. Yeah, I had no idea he did that. Like Holy he's shit. like, yeah, dude. He like, I mean, I saw him with that little, a couple times at Grapplers is on with that little camera, like recording stuff. Yeah. He took so much footage and like without being an obnoxious asshole. It, yeah. It blew my mind. I got to say this too, man. Like him and him and Josh Barnett. And like this is it, it sucks because this podcast right now is just us sucking our own dicks, like over and <laughs> over gonna, again. I was gonna bring that up. We're earlier. literally just blowing each other, <laughs> and we're blowing ourselves like right now, which is fine because I feel like we worked really hard on it. Yeah, We've we been deserve, talking we, about we it a lot. It, yeah, so that's our mania, dude. We you know what I mean? It, yeah. Um, and like they, Josh and and Matt did a really good job of letting me know how cool it was that yeah. that that thing was happening. Yes. And I was like, cool, man. You know what I mean? Like, they'd say it, and I'd be like, okay, I got to go do something. Yeah. And you don't really, like, suck it in. Until after. And then you, like, look, and you're like, these dudes, like, well, both of them are world champions. Yeah. Former world champions. Yeah. They have a lot of money. Yeah. (laughs) Like, both of them. (laughs) They do cool shit all the time. Yeah. And for them to say, like, this is one of the coolest things I've been a part of, that means a ton. And I mean, it means it, like, it would mean a ton to me. If Gregory Iron said that to me. Exactly. And it, it's because it's a, more of a friendship thing where yes. it's like, hey, man, like with them saying like, I'm proud of you without saying like, I'm proud of you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, this is really cool. Like, and now in my head, it was like, okay, that was cool. But like, how cool is next? You're going to be like, what can I do oh, yeah. to make it cooler? Yes. You know, and the original NWO would do that. <laughs> the black and white. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Matt put it on his Instagram like a couple times, like like back home, like the amount of inspiration I just got from this past week. And yeah, it was just like yeah, like I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty much just repeating what you said, but like for a guy like him who does what he does to find inspiration from us, to, like it's, it's like it's kind of like oh yeah, he's right. That was like that whole process was yeah. pretty fucking cool. And, and like I said, he got and he got to see everything. Yeah, like, and I kept aspect. saying it like, and it was kind of a joke the first time I said it. Like that literally was Fubu. It was for us by us. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And like, it was just everything on that thing was like, make us like, see if we could do it. Like that was the challenge to see how, how we could get it done. And we all got it done. Like, like every time I die hired the dream team sound wise, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. you said those like, were like all your top dudes. To yeah. We with. literally had like both of our like merch guys. We had like the best guitar tech we've ever had working for us. Yeah. That we've had, uh, you know, a sound guy that we trusted and we flew in Ben Wilcox who like Ben Wilcox didn't have to do nearly the, the shit that he had to do. Like the, our tour manager. Yeah. We hired, like, we hired a tour manager for the day to just literally go, yeah, I'll take care of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, but you know, you're, huge you're literally there. going up and it's like, Hey, can you get with Brett really quick? Like he has to meet Brett from ESW uh-huh. to like help with something on the wrestling thing. And not once did he like scoff at anything. He was just like, yeah, sure. I can do that. That's awesome. You know what I mean? He helped, he stayed up and helped light, set all, set all the lights up That's until really cool. he left, you know, like in yeah. the morning, then was back at like 8 AM. That's great. May have slept there. I don't know. Yeah. yeah there's a good chance. But, and then that night, like, Literally was like, no, you guys go home. We got this. We'll take care of all the gear. We'll that's, drop it all yeah, off. Yeah, that's. I was thinking about that for you guys. That's huge, man. Yeah, and it was just like, all right, I get to go home. Oh, dude. You know. Yeah. And then like, again, like everybody thinks we have people working for us. Mm-hmm. That just meant they packed a Penske truck <laughs> yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. And the Penske truck went somewhere. Yeah. And then, uh, Jordan, Steve, and Keith unloaded the Penske truck into the Buckley's parents garage. Oof, yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was wrestling in Toronto. Yeah. Which know? is cool. And that's like insane, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it just, the things that I thought of that day, like Keith Buckley literally bought all of the Christmas, anything that you saw that was like Christmas decoration. Yep. Keith went and bought because cool. he wanted it to be on stage. Yeah. Like while he played or like, it was Those just fucking <sighs> shooters they had going off to were insane. Badass looking. Yeah. It snowed. Yeah. Yeah. When you guys started, it, it snowed, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Frank Sinatra and Snow. <laughs> it, was, it was a great opener. Yeah, that was, was perfect. Uh, that was Keith. I think we were talking about that on the way in here too. Like, it it turned out pretty cool. That I mean, we did get hit with snow pretty hard Friday. Yeah, but like you know, for I'm, all I'm, the out of towners, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad they got to experience Buffalo snow. Yeah, because it wasn't so bad that like well, you know, Nate got a little stuck ski, but like, yeah, you know, but he was laughing about it. Yeah, no, like Sammy Callahan, his flight got here on time the, the day of the show. Yeah. Like, you know, nobody didn't not make it to the show because of the weather or anything. So like, yeah. it's kind of cool. Like I, that we were like the snow was all gone now. It has rained and the snow is all gone. Yeah. I'm kind of glad we had snow. We got white it. Christmas. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. And that was really cool. I remember that Friday, it got really scary. Yeah. Like there was straight Real up scary. like a whiteout. Like when that right was... when we were like moving the gear from <laughs> like like to the venue. Uh huh. I got I was following the Penske truck. Yep. And I was with Matt. And Matt's in the car, mind you, helping us load. Yeah, through the I, I snow. I remember him and Puff said that was really cool. They did Insane. That. Yeah, like that the guy, like that. you said, the guy's on vacation and he's helping you load gear. Yeah, like Puff didn't have to do that either. No, you know what I mean. Super cool. Showed up and helped us like load through the snow. Yeah, load into the venue. You know what I mean? Just like selfless shit. Yep. Um. To to like I, I picked up Bill Carr flew in on Friday of Team Tremendous. Um, I picked him up at the airport, and he was like, yeah, like uh, seven, there was like seven people on my flight that are going to the show. And I don't I don't think they do. He was a wrestler. He was like, yeah, people just like kept asking me about the show. And he was like kind of taken aback. I was yeah. like, Bill, you're 6'5", and you're wearing a cannibal corpse hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah. Kind of, it's kind of a dead giveaway. <laughs> it was, like, I got a text. Unless they knew who you were, too, as a wrestler. I got a text from Bill that basically said the same thing. He was like, thank you so much. Yeah. Yesterday was so fucking cool. And yeah. he goes, even if I'm not wrestling next year, I'm there. I'll be there every single fucking year. Fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just, I'll be there every year. He's amazing. Yeah. And he, it's just like that. And it, like, I, I know that like, cause we, me and Jesse kind of took ourselves as like promoter that day. Yeah. And it was kind of cool Promo- to, promoter see, brothers. to see Seb and Brett. Like yeah, sitting in front of us, who like yeah. are two guys that hire Usually us. Book us yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it, to sit there and they're in there like listening to our speech and like I could see Brett smirking like the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like because they have to do that. Seb too. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's so funny that we we had to do that and like, I, like, but that's uh, fucking for me like that. That I never even really thought of it that way. Like that's huge because uh, like I said, a lot of this opportunity for me was to get Grapplers Anonymous and ESW and Smash and everybody to work together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because fucking everywhere else with wrestling, there's a zillion promotions, nobody works together, Yeah, and it sucks. Yeah. Like, that's why I'm really trying to do something here with Buffalo and, you know, Smash only being a couple hours away in Toronto. Like, if we all work together, man, it'd be so fucking awesome. That's, and, like, like, that's, that's a cool moment. We moment always right talk about this, uh, especially, I guess, us three are, are very evident of that. We're like, if there's something that I could throw at Kevin... To put over something that he's doing. Yeah, an idea for him. He asks, and then we kind of, like, brain sell it together. Like, all of us are just like, oh, shit, you know, with, with you and some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, we had the conversation, like, last week. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Hey, let's come up with some new shit. Some, yeah. And it's like, all right, you know, and, like, today I sent Jesse up an email that was like, or a text, an email. I sent him an electronic <laughs> mail that... Uh, <laughs> The other day I was like, I was, I was so tired. Yeah. Were you there when I, str- I had like a stress fucking bubble and then just sounded as 40 as possible. I, don't think so. I was like, I sent her an aim. I, I sent him a, an electronic. <laughs> I just like kept fumbling through things Definitely before I was not. like text message. <laughs> like, it was like, I went through like the history of like saying it was like <laughs> carrier pigeon messages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, I sent him a text the other day or today that was just like, yo, let's watch Way of the Gun and just brainstorm. Hell yeah. And just start throwing ideas out there for like cool shit that we can do it just, it, for Butcher and the Blade. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and just business stuff. Yeah. Uh, it hit me. Yes, it was during Star Wars. I don't know. Something just, I just heard something that just reminded me of, that was one of the things I liked about Way of the Gun was like, I think it's the opening credits with those like drums like doom, doom, mm-hmm. doom, or whenever there was like a standoff or something like yeah. that. And I was like, dude. We got to put that in our entrance music. And yeah, like yeah, and then I I will watch way the, I've I think I've watched way the gun like three four times. I'll I can't get no I problem. can't wait. Is C four uh, R rated? C four wrestling. I think so. Okay, because we're gonna cut a promo yeah. when we're there. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell a guy that I'm gonna whip him silly and fucking stupid. <laughs> Cause that's like the best line yeah, ever. Like, she ain't lying. She's. I'm gonna fuck you stupid and whip you <laughs> yeah, silly. It's Sarah Silverman. I'm yeah. saying that for sure. 
<laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Man, you are sweating so bad right oh, now. Oh, really? Are you, are, you, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> It's hot, man. Um, Joey Janelle just texted right there. What do you say? Thanks for having me this past weekend. I got I got a lot of those. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think we should go into uh, yeah, straight up. I think the I don't know. If I feel bad like I'm saying this, but like yeah, I, I think match, I think match of the night. I think was Kevin Bennett and Joey Janelle. Yeah, I, I kind of figured should, it was going. We to should be. talk to yeah. We should get Kevin on here to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, then I can take a pee break too. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're up, bud. Hang on. Yeah. So hey, what's up? Months ago, we were we were trying to think of because we knew uh, Joey hit me up and said, "Do you mind if I bring Penelope Penelope with me to come out?" Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> without asking you, I just said yes. And um, like a little hot blonde girl, you're gonna say yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean on the card. I always gonna put a little heat on that guy, especially if you're gonna be like the baby face. Yeah. So I just kind of pulled the trigger on that one and and did it. And um, yeah. And then we were like talking about you. It was like, so if he comes out with a hot blonde girl, and I just come out as the guy that wears blue pants, essentially, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. How am I gonna get over as like this powerful baby face guy? I know. And I was like trying to brainstorm. I was like, what it was, and the ideas that I had was. Rent Thurman Thomas, like for you to come out with Thurman Thomas, or like, like Thurman Thomas, or like Cornelius Bennett, like get Biscuit to like walk you down. I would have loved that. Yeah, but um, no, the Santa thing was huge. And I just remember we were like going over things, like oh this, and I was like, yeah. well, fucking Santa Claus is gonna be the most over dude on it. Yeah. And then like it was funny because like Joey Janela is like a human gif, yeah. like that is now getting around like him getting double choke slammed by giant Santa by Santa. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then you awesome. doing the moonsault, which was awesome. Dude, it was perfect. It was like the perfect timing. I think yeah. it was very appropriate for the finish right after that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when we were talking about it, I'm just like, that's going to be the highest point in the match. Like yeah. there's, there's nothing we could do to top that, yeah. you know, to make everybody go uh, crazier than they did. It was so. uh, my favorite though, is like, we all kind of, anticipated Joey's entrance into seeing that place for the first time. Yeah. And the very first thing out of his mind or mouth was, who's going off the balcony? Yeah, it's the first thing he for said. The first fucking thing yeah. Joey said when he walked in. Did he? When I... Because... Is it okay we say this? How they yelled at us about the balcony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they, the first thing the building said to like everybody, to like Brett, anybody in charge, like Brett, Chris Ring, they were like, Nobody is going off the fucking balcony. That's like what Riverworks told us. We're like, yeah, nobody's going off of there. Straight up. Yeah, and then even Chris Ring said to me, "It's, it's." He's like, "Dude, this place is sold out. Like, this goes well. We could do this all the time. Mm-hmm. Why fucking risk it with exactly. somebody jumping off the balcony?" Yeah. But when I, so yeah, like Hacker had made mention of it, but I knew he'd be cool. And then uh, Joey, like I, I pulled him aside when he got there, and I was just like, "Hey, man, I, I got to tell you something." <laughs> And uh, he was like, as soon as like, like I said, I mean, he was pretty tired. He drove from Vermont, Kentucky, I think, Burlington, Kentucky. Is that was it? Connecticut. I think it was Connecticut. Really? Oh, Connecticut, sure. Vermont, Kentucky. Somewhere, <laughs> yeah. man. He, yeah, he drove real far overnight. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, you know, props to him. I could tell he was a little sleepy, but it's it's wrestling. It is part of what we do. Um, when I I was like, hey man, you know the building yelled at us about the balcony, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to jump. Like it's almost like I almost felt bad. Like I, I think maybe for a second he thought we expected him to go off, and I was like, no, no, man, we we don't want anybody to go off. He was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like he didn't. Yeah, yeah. He was he was pretty 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 good about it. Yeah. Did um, why he did so he did say something about yeah, coming off the balcony. Joking. Well, that was I, the first thing he said when, when he, he walked in. Up. Yeah, he's like, so who's jumping off the balcony? <laughs> And yeah, everybody's like, no. I must, I must have caught him after. Yeah, they're like, no, Uncle Braxton said no. <laughs> or else he's going to fight somebody in the locker room or something. <laughs> so, yeah. There was a, uh, I did appreciate after, when Andy, when you did your, like, uh, speech after the show. Yeah. And then before you let me talk, there was a, all the all the young guys did an Uncle Braxton chant. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that was pretty. That was pretty entertaining. I you didn't want, cry, though. I thought I was going to cry during that speech. I think, I think your voice cracked in that one, too. I do remember definitely cracking talking to the wrestlers the night before. I'm Rick Flair. <laughs> I cry all the time. Yeah. I was next to you, and I thought you were going to cry. <laughs> which, which 
uh, the meeting. Oh yeah, I was gonna cry. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that. Was, it looked like it. That, that. <laughs> Wait, the one in the locker room? Yeah. No, the, uh, the one in the locker room. I was definitely going to cry. Yeah. I th- I thought it was the one the night before. Oh yeah, after I, was I was gonna cry there too. <laughs> you got you got you got you got pretty real with that one. You were just like, guys, you know. Big Lamar, the guys that are on the show. Like, just, yeah, he started started getting pretty like, I love you guys. I think he said, I love you guys like 14 times. <laughs> it was good, man. It's true, though. Yeah, it was very true. I just, I, and I guess I always have my like life motto. We switched mics. Yeah. I like that. This is all right, though, right? That's cool. Same deal. <laughs> um, my life motto is I just want my friends to come. That's it. <laughs> I just I was, and when we did Alicia's podcast, your motto was you want all your friends to feel like they're 15 years old every day. Yeah, I didn't want to say to a, to a little yeah, with her dad. 22-year-old girl in front of her dad, yeah. hey, so the, I just want my friends to come. The real motto is... I want all my friends to come constantly. That's it. I was waiting, and that is I like, was waiting for the second part to like you come, come the best home or something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all right. You're onto something here. Yeah. Yeah. I just want my friends to come. That's it. All of them. <laughs> all the time. Like you're 15 years old. Yes. <laughs> like those 15 year old loads. That's it. Yeah. You, there's Peter Pan and then there's Peter Pud. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Peter Pud wants his friends to come. Peter Pan just wants everybody to be 15. <laughs> you were talking about that. Yeah, you're, you're like the Robin Williams Peter Pan. Yeah, a little yeah, older. With the super hairy hairy arms, arms. Big hairy arms. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Pud. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. I just want my friends to come yeah. all the time. Oh, boy. I feel, I feel like everybody had a good time. I was trying to make a joke about Never Never Land, but there's no joke <laughs> there. There was nothing there yeah. when it comes to coming. Yeah. Yeah, but I uh, now I feel like I should go down the list of... Uh, yeah, I got I got a lot of text messages of just like cloudy. Tugger, tugger land. Cloudy, a lot of tugs. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I did have Big Willie's. I wanted to start a at one point in time. I wanted to start my own rub and tug, <laughs> a totally legal rub and yeah, tug called Big Willie's Tug. T- or what was it? Tug Big, time? No, it was Big Willie's. It was like Big Willie's tug and pull or something like that. Like just off a highway. Just come on in and get a tug in. I got all the coolest videos in here. Yeah. Like, it's like pre the internet. Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh, shit, there's a Big Willie's tug to <laughs> It's like a chain yeah. all throughout the country. Yeah. <laughs> where did... Uh, tug and pulls. Where, where did where did Pud, like, where did Pud come from, like, a while back? Uh, my, my name's technically still on Twitter is Pud Williams. Yeah, and it's like Pudville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was... Um, uh, why can't I think of his name right now? The singer of the Bled came up with it like a long, long time ago. Cause yeah. I was like, man, that would be really cool if I had like a cool nickname. He's like, well, what would your nickname be? I was like, Pud. <laughs> and he was like, all right. And he just kept calling me Pud. <laughs> James, James Munoz. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he would just be like, Pud, what's up, man? And just like, and he just, he just let it stick. He's trying to make it stick hard. Yeah. yeah. And then I just was like, yeah, P U D D. Pud Williams. <laughs> Pud Williams. Wait, there was a point in time where like Shit. Wes and I got really into like we would look at old stats for baseball like, uh-huh. in the 30s and the 20s. Okay, and there's so many good names. Shorty ba- or a Shooty Babbitt. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was a guy literally named Shooty Babbitt, <laughs> yeah. and then another guy named like Pud something another uh, in that. And I was like, Well, I'm taking that. there. It is. Yeah. Another guy named Tug. There is a guy named Tug. <laughs> like his legit name was Tug. Yeah. Not even like a nickname and no, quotes in between or something. Yeah. <laughs> Straight yeah. up. <laughs> oh, colorful yeah. socks on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was like it was it was a pretty cool thing. Like the next day, I mean, I'm going to smash and like I, I gotta say that I was like I was extremely nervous to wrestle at the Christmas show because it's just like you know that wrestling. You guys, the, you and West both will like handle. I figured you guys were gonna be really nervous, but yeah. like it didn't come across. Yeah, I think wearing the pants. Uh-huh. was like the coolest thing because on my hot tag mm-hmm. like watching the hot tag I seemed I legit was like 
I could have been awesome in ECW. <laughs> yeah. Like it was the first time I was actually like, cause I, and I, I mean, you're the dude that's seen me wrestle the most Yeah. and it's, it's sometimes hard for me to let my emotion out when I'm wrestling. Cause I'm thinking so hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? But a situation not, like that, dude, but it, I can't, when put, you're getting the response that you're getting, it's hard not to. Yeah. But I can't like put, and I, I almost think that that I, I don't know. I could probably ask both of you guys. Like, you guys have been well. Kevin's only been wrestling for about two months. Yeah. Now, yeah he's, <laughs> first match on Saturday, fucking tore the house down. <laughs> um, like, was there like a point in time where like everything just came together perfectly? And then the next, do you remember the match after that? And you were like, it just was easy. Like that match on Saturday, even yeah. though my shoulder wasn't working, I couldn't lift my shoulder over my head. Yeah, your arm over your head. Yeah, my arm over my head that yeah. day. I not once was nervous. I legit wasn't even worried. And like, that was like the one thing. Like, Wait, it was on Sunday? On Sunday. Yeah. Uh, there was no nerves. There that, was nothing. Like, I think that's because. That day, if you would have told me to do the same dive uh, Nate did, yeah. I would have probably went four rows into the. Yeah. Like I would have been like, oh, fuck it, whatever, who cares? Yeah, yeah. sure. I'll yeah, do yeah. a leg drop from the fucking top to the outside. Well, uh, I mean, not saying the show on Sunday was smaller than the show on Saturday, but just, I mean, you had such a big day on Saturday with wrestling and performing, yeah. and there was so much built up in that being in your hometown, and it's like, now that that's over, yeah. and plus too, like, I mean, I'm sure Kevin can attest to this, like, when, you, when you're wrestling... You know, it's yeah, it's only it's tough when you only wrestle a couple times a month. Yeah, yeah. Like that's why I try to get that's why I'm trying to get guys to come to the ring every Wednesday because it's like even just getting in there a little bit just helps. Of course, the time. Of like course. so, I think Sunday you were just more comfortable. Like I like I I mean I can remember like the month I spent in Japan when I was yeah. like either training or had a show every day. By the end of that month, I was like a machine. Like wrestling was just like yeah, automatic. second nature. You know what I mean? But like, I, I just it was like really weird because that watching the video of me wrestling. At the Christmas show, there was, like, legit times where, like, in other matches that I had matched with you. Like, yeah. Kevin, I, I, like to my to this day, I still think the match I had with Kevin was probably my best match. Where yeah. it just, like, everything kind of lined up. And I wasn't, like, really out of place for anything. Mm-hmm. I watch it, and I'm like, okay. But there still was, like, this robotic thing to me where, like, yeah. there was times where, like, I should have been selling or I should have been doing something. I'm firing the crowd up. And I wasn't doing it. You know I think, what I mean? Yeah, I think that's coming across because uh, it's because you're getting you're getting more ring experience. Yeah. That's what I always tell guys. Like that whole robotic thing yeah. goes away with time because the more you do this, the less you have to think. Like it, I didn't even think there's like one thing that I did that like blows my mind because I don't remember doing it. Is like so the hot tag was super easy. Like I did a back elbow. Yep. I did a big Polish hammer. Yeah. It was that. Into this, like, I do, like, a uh, a weaving, like, ripcord lariat. Yeah. I do the ripcord lariat. As soon as I nailed him, I, like, jumped in the air, screamed. I remember. I and then it, turned, yeah. pointed at Cloudy, told him to come at me. Yeah. And then I did my, Just like, fired spot. Up. And I was like, I don't remember doing any of that. Well, because, and you're not, you're. You're not even thinking, like you know what I mean. Like you're not even really so thinking cool. of what's next. It, like, yeah, yeah, like I legit, like well, everyone. Also, also, you're getting Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I know, like I reactions. Know. So, like, like, it's pretty so easy like, to be fired up. I was like, because I didn't, I don't think of that stuff. I don't think of like the little things because it's not like, like if I played basketball against you guys, you guys would be like, oh shit, I would never know he would be know how to do that because yeah. basketball is like a game that I literally played my entire life. Yeah, and like now I don't play that much, but like. You guys have never seen me play basketball. So, like, if you saw me play basketball, you'd be like, where the fuck did that come from? Yeah. You know what I mean? That last, like, that Saturday, Yeah. I was just like, this is it. This is what I do. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was just so crazy. So then Sunday, it was just like, yeah, this is what I do. And I, I mean, I debuted the, 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 oh, the trunks. The trunks. The trunks get sick. You know? The best was you walked around the locker room with shorts on because you're so uncomfortable walking around with those tights. It was cold. Yeah, it was a little chilly, yeah. But, but you yeah, obviously like, had brought some shorts with you to like not walk around oh, yeah. the tights. And, uh, and a shirt. You, uh, <laughs> you uh, what was the picture you sent to me too where like you were kind of almost like Andre the Giant tied up in the ropes yeah. and, hackers, and your legs are just spread yeah, and, with your little tights on? Yeah. Hacker's like <laughs> laughing. I love that picture. Yeah, it's great. I fucking hate him. I'm so, we're in the middle of a storyline, so yeah, yeah. I technically, you, gotta hate him. But even, yeah, that even was like he's probably gonna come podcast next yeah. week. <laughs> but even like that, 
like even like that day like i remember like like james came up to me and was just like dude you got so much better yeah he put a like, tweet up about it and he was just like dude you're selling during the heat was like great. i told you your selling was great yeah you said that and yep. like it was just like i don't know like i was just trying to do i wasn't trying that's what it was yeah if that makes sense no that's because like i said i just keep going back to it but yeah the more time you put yeah. into this you know what i mean the only time in the entire match where i was like like reality hit was when Nate kicked me in the fucking head. Yeah, he was like, yeah, that guy, axe chop me in the fucking that, back of the head with his heel. <laughs> yeah, that that'll kind of settle. So. But yeah, it never was like and even like we like me and Blackwood like botched my like kind of comeback. Yeah. Um. It like I didn't wasn't that bad. Like usually, like if I'm out of place during a match or something like that, I instantly get that like oh, oh fuck yeah I fucked up like yeah. you know you get that like spidey sense yeah or whatever. And then you're like, oh, fuck. Like, I fucked. I'm the guy that fucked up. Like, I'm going to get yelled at for that one. You know yeah. what I mean? Or something like that. I was just like, it'll work. I'm just going to do it now. Yeah, here I and go. And, like, here he comes coming at me. It's not the way. It's not in the same context as we talked about, but. The, no, that's. I mean, like. I, the high cross body got there. I got a reaction. I just talked great. about this with Sammy, and then I, I tell guys this at the school all the time. It's like, blowing spots is a part of wrestling. Like, it happens. Yeah. Like, it's. it's and, you know, so if somebody blows a spot and you get, like. You know, you blow a spot and I get mad about it. I'm yeah. pretty much the asshole because it's yeah. going to happen. And that's part of training is you got to learn how to cover that shit up. Because yeah, yeah. There's people watching. You can't, you know what I mean? You can't stop and be like, oh, shit, we fucked that up. Let's do that over again. Yeah. No, you got to. So it's good that you're getting those improvisational, improvisational skills of like, you know what I mean? Just covering it up right away. Yeah. Is this the first time you wrestled two days in a row? Now I'm thinking about it. No. Okay. I did Sarnia in London. That's okay. I was just thinking of yeah. Sarnia. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, obviously, usually the the second day you just feel a lot more comfortable. You get rid of yeah. those like jitters. Like I, I felt awful the second day, the first time. <laughs> even, My even, least favorite match I've ever had. Even for me, like when if I go do like a week of tapings at like Impact, um, you know the the doing that getting that first match out of the way. Because it's, you know, it's fucking national television you're filming. So, like, getting that first match out of the way and then, like, the rest of the week is kind of, like, clear sailing yeah. as far as nerves and shit. Yeah. You know? It was just, like, a weird, like, the next day. Like, I remember, like, getting there <clears throat> and, like, sitting with Hacker and, and those dudes and, like, working through the match. Yeah. And the whole time I was just like, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And I had the whole match. Like, it was, like... And I, I just, I, you know, I told Hacker, I was like, you know, if it seems like I'm being a dead horse, yeah, I just like to know I have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, let me just do it mm -hmm. and just entertain it. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, I uh, okay, wa Fabe, watch, I'm watching, talking about punching him in his face. Watching it, watching it yesterday. You kept talking about like, did you have that gig mark on your head right now? Yeah. <laughs> looks this, great. Looks great. By the way, morning blood all over my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you kept okay. talking about a tornado DDT and I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. Yeah. And then when I watched, because you were talking about the apron and shit, I was like, what the fuck is he talking yeah. about? And then I watched, you, you guess what he, he did a tornado DDT on the outside of the ring, right? Yeah. Um, it, it was great. He hit the, yeah, it was my the guardrail. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I told those dudes, I was like, do as much cool shit as you can during that spot because yeah. once we get in the ring, it's going to be like short heat. Hot tag. Yeah. It's going to be over. So get it. Yeah. So like on the outside, you, like. You took a tornado DDT on the outside. Yeah. Take a good tornado he's DDT. He's got a great, great knob right well, the, the this, this is what happened. It wasn't from that. Okay. Oh, I thought it was. No, no, no. If you watch it, uh -huh. it would be awesome if there was a sound. Yeah. Because it, I hit so hard. Yeah. So the tornado DDT wasn't from that. Like he hit me with it and I just rolled out perfectly. Like my, 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 my head was tucked. Yeah. And I just over i tried to oversell it by like sitting up at the end uh -huh. and when i sat up the ring like literally like the the cross par oh was you, right there you like, yourself? And, I just head -butted <laughs> that thing, and then like sat back down and i was like oh god that hurts so <laughs> it wasn't the tornado ddt what a weird <laughs> yeah because the tornado ddt looked good it looked great yeah i yeah. sold it pretty well but it was just like I just I just sat up to try to sell it. Yeah, and then, and then the head. crossbar was right there. Yeah. Bink, and I was oh, like, oh fuck. Oh, that's right up on the floor. It rocked me. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. And it was it was it was funny too, like right after because we talk about dives a lot. Like the whole like, like when we interviewed Kevin, mm -hmm. a lot of the podcast was like us talking about when his head was rocked. Yeah. You know, and it it scares me when shit like that happens mm -hmm. and fucking Nick and Meddy's like, or I, I said, I go, dude, do you have to do a dive here? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like in this match, you you got to do a dive yeah, here. Step up it's dive, he look does. Fucking awesome. Yeah, and he did it, and it looked great. Yeah, his, his dive is nuts. I legit, like, 
Cloudy like pulled us back. Yeah. So he didn't like blast the guardrail. The guardrail. Yeah. But then he like just does it high. <laughs> yeah. And like we had to run up on it. Oh gosh. Gotcha. And he kind of fucking ate the ground real hard. Yeah. Yeah. And it it was okay. He, like he, I mean, he power bombed himself. Oh, yeah, I do remember seeing that. Did he say, like, because that's with Kevin's dive, too, like a flip dive like that. Yeah. Yeah, you got to, because you got to protect the guy's head. If you catch his feet, he's still fucked. Yeah. Um, you kind of got to get under him. Yeah, we just basically just got to make sure you have his head. Yeah. Um, did he say, was it no, bad? he didn't say it was bad. I mean, okay. he got mad, but, like, yeah. it just scares me. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, I jumped up forward as far as I could on it, and, like, I just caught his arm, like, yeah. legs. It's, I mean, it kind of sucks. It's funny you bring this up because I'm getting really good at catching dives these these yeah. days. <laughs> and, uh, Knock on fucking wood, man. Yeah, yeah not like I actually was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I used to, I like, I mean, I still kind of do hate like you talking about this. Like they're just so dangerous, and people do them so often. It's like they're so not necessary. Like you don't have to yeah. do it, and they're just in so that match, fucking dangerous. It, the context was perfect, though. It was great. Yeah, like and he had, and, to and do it's it a big that. show. Like it's, yeah. it was, it was, it was awesome. Um, but um. Yeah, I just, I mean, I can remember, like, I remember one time, I, it was me, it was me and one other guy catching a dive, and the dude did it where he went and hit the ropes, and his tag partner, like, backdropped him out oh, of the Jesus. ring onto us, and he was so high, and I was just like, holy fuck, man, like. You said that about, uh. And then Mandrews, too. About TDT, brother. Yeah, so. And he does a moonsault. The guy's yeah, huge. Yeah, but that's like, um. And he gets so high. Like, so that my thing with dives is, like, I just literally want to grab the person and, like, I mean, like, I don't even care how it looks as long as they're safe. You know yeah, what I mean? of course. Like, I don't even care if it looks like I catch you and we do the most dainty dive to the floor. Like, Who cares? I just, yeah. Like, um, but I was, it was at Impact. It was, like, me and Eddie Edwards. Maybe, I think there was another person there, too. And Chuck Taylor was doing just where he hit the ropes and did a big front flip dive. Yeah. And, like, as he was coming out, like, Eddie Edwards was, like, right to his feet and, like, Chuck was so good at it. Like, we literally just, we didn't even catch him. We just kind of guided him down to his feet. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that was fucking awesome. So yeah. it's, I, I asked I asked uh, Thomas from TD, TDT, I was like, on a moonsault, I was like, do you want me to catch you? Or do you want me to more just kind of guide you to your feet? And he was like, yeah, I just kind of like land on my feet. So like when he did it, I just kind of like, like you're saying, it's like, it, it did, it seemed like he hit pretty hard, but it's like, if you break their fall, yeah, yeah. they're really, it's just like, you know, they stop they and then it's just like, down. yeah, yeah. but not the one you're talking about, like they're like, even if you do break their fall, they can still hit their head. Yeah. Um, but it's, Yo, yeah, like Thomas looks great. He works out at home. He told me he looks fucking great. He, he uses Frankie, the mobster smelling salts Yeah, because he works out at home. Because yeah. Frankie had the smelling salts, and he asked oh, Tom. He, he came hey, over. Great transition into something. <laughs> he came, that I said yeah, I was yeah. going to talk about. We got a good segue here. For, so basically, we're we're calling a match. Frankie comes over to Thomas, and they start talking in French, and it's really strange. Of course. And then like Frankie was like, bah, ah, da, and he like walked away all mad, <laughs> and it was because he wanted some of Thomas's smelling salts because he has stronger ones, and yeah. he didn't have any. Uh, and then Thomas told me he's like, yeah, I, I use them for when I work out at home because uh, you know I'm at home, so it's just something to like. I turned the music up and I just used smelling salts. I was just like, what "That's awesome." The fuck? He looks great. He's in though, great man. shape. Yeah. And you can tell. You can tell when a, when brothers are hitting it hard. Yeah. Because like, they come out in a flannel and like a minute Did in. Did he take it off like, instantly? Yeah. 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 And then, it, I love it. yeah. And then they're like, so sometimes you ask him to do a spot. Like, I'd rather like like uh, like Brody Lee or Luke Harper used to hate taking his wife beater off. Like yeah, he hated yeah. it. Yeah. Because guys a lot of time guys Me would tear, tear it to chop him, and he would, he would just get furious. Yeah. <laughs> but the, so that Frankie the Mobster segue. Well, the Frankie the Mobster. First of all, uh, this is probably I the can't, this is the eighth podcast in a row we talked about him. Legit can't talk enough about him. Yes. I love him so much. First of all, I want to say this. And it, I thought it was a really cool thing that Seb did. Seb just made it a point during his speech at Smash, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. He did a really cool thing about how when you're at a Smash show and someone disrespects you, to just come grab someone or stand up for yourself. Yeah. And I thought that yeah, was like, fucking awesome. It doesn't matter if you're a young boy and some veteran yes. is bullying you or whatever. It doesn't matter. And... One cool thing we didn't talk about is like some guy coming up and saying something to Laura that was awful. Yeah. At a show. And Frankie the Mobster came out 
of the locker room, found the guy, oh, yeah. and scared the fucking daylights out of him. ASAP. Yeah. And this is like a couple months ago. We didn't talk about it. I think mm-hmm. it was like probably before I went on tour or something like that. But like, I hope this, does, I hope this doesn't make me sound terrible, but like, it's maybe more of a credit to Frankie. Was like, yeah, I mean, Frankie literally did it so fast. I mean, it's, yeah, my, yeah, it's my wife. Yeah. He literally did though. it so fast, I didn't have a chance. And <laughs> plus, him being a good brother fucking ed the owner of impact was yeah. there literally right by the guy yeah so yeah. if i would have done that it would have probably fucked me pretty hard yeah so yeah frankie is just being more of a better human being yeah you know what i mean and then told me like a story about how he showed up at impact and like caught john morrison oh yeah like a dive like <laughs> yeah. so he said even, even john was like thanks dude you're the only one that caught me <laughs> he was talking about dives too and he said like at one point some dude he was on a card with someone and a guy went for a dive and like overshot him and he actually grabbed the dude's ankle in midair and pulled the dude into him. I believe it. And caught him. I believe it 100%. And like, I mean, he's just like, and he basically said the same thing as you did. He's like, they scare me so much. They're terrifying. And then he talks about his dive, which I, I think a lot of times. He can control himself. Unless- his, for sure. His, um, <coughs> he's, his first language is, is French. Yeah. So, but he, he speaks really good English. Yes. But a lot of times you, when there's something he can't like articulate, you can see the wheels turning Yeah. and he usually gets it. Yep. And there's nothing worse than when the wheels are turning with someone like that. And you're the guy that's like sandwich, uh, uh, yellow, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Ford X court. Uh, uh, Thomas did the same thing. And it's like, you always forget that like those guys, English is their second language. Yeah. yeah. Cause they, they, they but I was like, uh, how do I say this? Uh, uh yeah. And yeah, yeah. he was like, you're just like, uh, floorboard. Uh, yeah. He's like, I don't, I don't you're know. You're just throwing shit <laughs> yeah, at him. And yeah, it's like, it's, no, not even in the same context. Yeah. I'm talking about oceanography. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, Frankie, uh, we were like talking about dives and he, I, I think I, I, he thought I meant that he was really heavy on dives, Yeah, but I didn't mean it like that at all. I was talking about the, the image of him flying through the air. Yeah. Cause he goes as hard He's as he fucking can. fucking crazy. Yeah. And like, it's just the suey dive through, through the, the ropes. through the ropes that everybody does, but, like, but he's huge and yeah. goes as fast as he possibly can. So like if, if young greenhorn Kevin Bennett does it, uh-huh. it looks like a guy diving. Yeah. When Frey the Mobster does it- It looks like utter chaos. It's fucking insane. And you it's know, loud as fuck. It's because just he's... the image of like him flying through ropes, and he was like, no, 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 I'm very light. <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't saying you weren't light. Yeah. It looks crazy when yeah, you do it. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I think we were talking about Brody when Brody does the like his flip dive, and I was talking yep. about the day before about how he like kind of fucked up, and yeah, uh, so- fucked up, but like- I, it's like, I, be I just fucking, got. I just got to do this again and get it. It's got to be terrifying to just run straight at a hundred and seventy-five pound man. Yeah, and just concrete all around him <laughs> is scary. Yeah, and you're gonna do a fr- front flip. Yep. Whatever. Anyways, mm-hmm. we were just talking about that, and um, he's just like like talking about like safety and like how that, and then and then Uno had brought up the fact that like. Bailey, Mike Bailey just did that thing where his like knees caught and he came straight down like he hit the fucking ceiling. Oh. And his you know, on his on his shooting yeah, star or yeah. something and his knees hit and he fucking just went straight to his head. Oh. Straight down. Just so scary. Yeah. Um Okay, to get back to it. Uh-huh. All what we were about to talk about. Yeah. The dick on Frankie the Mobster <laughs> is insane. Well, the first time it came out was when you were well, talking okay, about so, the drawstring in yeah. your tights. And this isn't like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not going to say anything negative about Kyla Customs yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my trunks, but she didn't put a drawstring in it. Yeah, so you're just asking about. So I'm just, I, I, I just went up, I was like, and it looked like Frankie didn't have a drawstring in his, so I just went up to Frankie, <clears> I was like, hey man, do you have a string in your trunks or whatever? <laughs> yeah. And then he just pulls the his dick out of the top of like, it. Like kind of, just like the yeah. tip. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, there's a string. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nothing. And then he's like, yeah, I got a drawstring. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> Great cool. Joke. So I see his dick. Yeah. And then the show's on and he does his thing. And now the show's over and, and we're all kind of like packing up. And yeah. like they had a they had a spot in the last match. Like him, Uno, yeah, Stu. So he's like toweling off and changing. Yeah. And he's just like, he always takes this little room. All the French guys are in that room. And it's a really little room. Yeah. Like Uno and Stu are both in that room yeah. and Frank are in that room. Yeah. It's like really tiny. It's about the size of this room. Uh-huh. 
and they're all in this room, but Frankie's <clears> the only one in there, and he's just naked, standing there. Yeah. In the room, and I, like Frankie the mobster again, we mesh him all the time. If you haven't looked him up at this point in time, <laughs> he is just a science experiment. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. So like he's just sitting there, and I'm just like looking, and I'm just like, there's not a part of him that isn't like jacked. Yeah. And then he turns. <laughs> And what comes swinging at me a huge, a huge prick is just, it looked like a souvenir baseball bat from like a St. Louis Cardinals. The little ones. Yeah. yeah. Just is right there. And I was like, I think he caught me staring at him. Like, I was just like, fuck man, there it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. wow. Yeah. I mean, that was like almost as surprising as. Kevin Spacey in seven. <laughs> like, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> great, great analogy yeah. there. Holy shit, it's Kevin Spacey. <laughs> um, look, yeah. at that, look at that piece. Oh, my God. And so <laughs> then you come down right at that time, and you're, like, looking at me, talking to me, and we're talking about, like, I think I had, like my trying to get a podcast in. I think I had my Kevin. jacket on, so I'm obviously yeah. leaving soon. And he just comes up behind you, and he's, like, turns you, gives a hug. Your hand almost brushes this thing <laughs> and then you hug him yeah naked yeah and then whatever you guys are like sitting there talking <laughs> i swear on my life i'm not making this up i'm not embellishing this at all there was a peanut on the ground his dick picked it up and shoved it in his <laughs> asshole <laughs> That is and amazing. Back, back, and, back, and then it went back, back. And then he went back into the other room. I backed back that up 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and put it in his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looked like a hairless mole. <laughs> like when you, like. When, when you're looking at, you're watching Discovery about planet Earth, and they get to like things that live underground, they show a hairless mole. Yeah. It is about nine. So this is soft, nine yeah. inches, and there's not a hair on that man. Yeah, I, I was, it was perfectly shaven like the rest oh of his body. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just looked. I mean, oh. it looked like a tiny puppy. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. That thing was huge, man. Yeah. Was Good like, on you. And then he goes like this. I remember like, um, I don't want to say it, but one of the guys at the locker room was like, let me touch that thing. Yeah. And he rolls up, just grabs his piece. Like a hundred percent. Like nothing. Like, just puts full, it in his hand. Full go fist grabbed it. And then someone makes the joke. Well, he's had both of his snakes in his hand today. Because <laughs> yeah. now Frankie comes out with a snake. He wrapped around his head. A live snake head. wrapped around his head. He is fucking awesome. And I was like, think about it, like, too, like, not, you know, like, ugh, yeah, snake, like, Jake the snake, like, Jake came out with it in a bag. Yeah. Or it was gigantic around his neck. Yeah. Frankie has, like, it's not small. No, no. But it, it, it's just legit wrapped around the top of his head and yeah. his face. <laughs> and he walks out with a live snake just wrapped around He's his awesome. dome. <laughs> and he... Did I put up an inside? It's, fuck, it's gone by now, but... He was sitting in that little room, and yeah. he has, like, the black eye makeup on and the fucking snake around his head and his whole gear on. He was just sitting there eating cookies. Yeah. <laughs> like, I took, like, a good 15-second video of this, him. I said this, like, how awesome wrestling is. This yeah. is, like, the the perfect thing. So, like, Tyson Duke's character is just, he's Tyson Duke's. Yeah. He's just a guy. Yeah. He's a wrestling guy. a great machine. wrestling guy, yeah. Yeah, right? And they're doing this spot with Frankie the Mobster, who is a living toy demon yeah you know what i mean like he is literally legit just if you had a kid go make a bad guy character toy yeah it looks it like it would be him exactly and they're in this room having a conversation like there's a promo where they're just having a conversation they're just sitting there and it's like only this happens in pro wrestling yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like only this happens in pro wrestling like a guy wearing sweatpants a normal shirt uh -huh. a hat talking to a guy with like paint all over his face <laughs> yeah. contact color contacts in yeah and they're just talking there's no like the conversation isn't like pro wrestling like at all it's just like yeah, yeah. yeah your foot was on the rope you know what I mean yeah. and they're just talking back and forth and then Frankie gets up and it's like that only happens in wrestling yeah. that only happens in wrestling it's great. no 
at no point is like a f- like a CEO sitting in his like office and a guy looking like that walks in and is like, okay, well, I've got last re- uh, month's numbers. Oh, uh, we've got to go over that. Okay. <laughs> And then let's, that guy's let's like, break it down. Right, let me see it. Files. Uh, are they in your briefcase? Yes, I have it right here. And then like <laughs> yeah. he pulls the numbers out and Frankie the mobster and this guy are talking about like it was gothic last briefcase. quarter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen in any other context yeah. at all. It's not like you're a you're a chef and your your shift ends at eight o'clock and then the guy that works from eight o'clock to said time he comes in and a guy looking like Frankie Mobster walks in and is like oh Ted how was today how was the last eight, the last eight hours was it busy yeah okay what do I gotta well, look forward to yeah let me put my uh, smock on now or whatever the fuck it is and then turns and starts cooking yeah it only happens it, in pro wrestling they have a serious conversation yeah, yeah. A man to man, like we're talking right now. Yeah. Only decked out in black furry boots and gauntlets and <laughs> yeah. fucking wrist gauntlets and fucking. Oh, we got a new babysitter, honey. Oh, okay. What time does he get here? Oh, he's going to be here at nine. Oh, uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, my name's Frankie the Mobster. <laughs> um, yes. Is this young Ted? The, okay. Was, is it, was it called? Is it the Beast? That's no, not the Beastmaster, is it? He calls him, I don't know. It's he, yeah, he calls himself the fuck. The is, Beast something. I don't think it's the Beastmaster. Yeah. But he, yeah, he went from. Is it? It's Frankie TM or is it FTM? Yeah, FTM. I think it's F, which I like best. Yeah, yeah. Because he's not a mobster anymore. No, he even says, "Ah, that that name sucks." Like he's he, a demon. He used to wear pants. Yeah, now he's just total demon. Frankie guy. the monster. <laughs> yeah, that should what, be his name. That's yeah. I think that's that's perfect. But yeah, he is. Um, he's something else. He's man. the best. I could. I. It's like my dream to have him on the podcast. I was just gonna say, like now, I feel like at this point, like when we finally get him on, it's just gonna like I don't know take shit to another level or something. Oh, my God. Well, because his Cabana podcast was maybe the best podcast I've oh ever my heard God. in my life. It was unreal. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I I don't even want him to talk about, like, life. No. I just want Frankie the Mobster. Yeah, like, he, cold, he got real into, like, life. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And it's, like, whatever. Like, I, that's cool. That's the place to talk about it. But, like, here, yeah. I want him to just be Frankie the Mobster. Loves movies. He'll talk like, movies yeah. all day. Please. He, we, went to his, we went to his house. And he had, I mean, just a, a bookshelf as big as this wall, and it was just all DVDs. Good. And he was, like, insulted. We didn't borrow any of them. <laughs> like, he kept, he kept telling me all day, like, if we would talk about a movie, he's like, yeah, I have, I have it, I have it. Like, if he was talking about a movie I hadn't seen, yeah. he's like, yes, I have it, I have it. And, like, and then, like, of course, when we got to his place, he was telling all of us, please borrow some of my movies. And, like, yeah. nobody took any, and he was, I think, really insulted. <laughs> I mean, no one has a DVD player anymore. <laughs> I think there was some Blu-rays in there, too. But like, No one has a Blu-ray player Yeah, anymore. I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me borrow your Netflix account. <laughs> yes, except, except him. He has a whole wall full of them. I got to say this. I tried to sign up for Amazon Prime. They offered on Apple TV now, uh-huh. and I couldn't do it. it. Like, there was no, like, sign-up thing. They're doing, like, a free trial right now. Yeah. And there's no, like, sign-up link. So, like, I got to watch one episode of The Tick... Yeah, and then it it wouldn't let me watch any more episodes. Is that is that what you're getting it for for the tick? Yeah, I uh oh shit, big yard. Just in general, I want. I mean, like, there's a lot more shit on that. Like, I want to watch See, that. I didn't. I, I don't know. I don't watch too much shit on there, dude. You got to watch that uh, American. Um, oh, Neil Gaiman. Um, um not why can't I think gangster. Of it right now? Ah, shit, American monsters. No. Why can't I think of it? Someone's listening to this right now going, Oh, f- you just fucking idiot. Just fucking, fucking American. Furious. Shit. I know. Where, it's like real. American Gods? Yes. Yeah. It's real over the top, right? Yeah. I watched, I did, I did turn it on. I watched like the first, <laughs> it's the real first horny. five minutes, oh, no, the first five minute scene I saw was like 300, but times 20 okay, of cool. insanity. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, I've heard it's, I've heard it's really, really good. Okay, good. Um, Cause I want to watch that. It did help. I, I did watch. I don't think we talked about this yet. I did watch Bone Tomahawk on there. That's amazing. And I, because you basically you recommended me to Brawl and Cell Block ninety nine. Yes, which I loved. Awesome. And then you, uh, it was in the for the table group text. Yeah, we I heard about, about someone said he'd made Bone. The same director made Bone Tomahawk. Yeah, which I had seen Bone. I had seen Bone Tomahawk at the Red Box. And I just thought, I was like, oh, Kurt Russell made a Western movie yeah. while he had the big stash for Hateful no. Eight. Not at all. Like, yeah. actually, I, I I liked Bone Time Walk better than Hateful Eight. Yeah. I can say that right now. Do you remember, dude. did you ever see Doomsday? The no. movie Doomsday? No. Oh, dude. Put that on your to-do list. Yeah. That's one of my all-time favorite movies. It's like just this badass chick who has a fake eye. Yeah. 
and she just like kicks ass and it's like in the future mm -hmm. they like throw odes to everything like oh really there's dudes on like dirt bikes like jumping around with mohawks yeah people it's it's fucking awesome it's great. there's like a scene that's kind of like um that's kind of like beyond thunderdome yeah i'm trying to like, if i've even seen a preview i'm sure dude I it's did. awesome yeah sexy chick Yep. Just whooping ass. There's like a girl that's like covered in like tribal tattoos and piercings and they yeah. like fight and she cuts her head off. It's, yeah, it's just a super fun movie. And then there's just a turn. I, and I went to take a piss. I remember the first time I saw it, I saw yeah. the movies. I went to take a piss and came back and I thought I walked into the wrong movie. That's crazy. I mean, it, it, it goes from like- Such a turn. Just post-apocalyptic yeah. to like nights. I mean- <clears throat> You got to see it. I'm it's fucking, it's fucking great. And I like gratuitous like- Something stops, the guy gets foiled, and then he just punches his friend because he's so angry. Yeah, yeah. So like the like one of the main heels is like this post apocalyptic like punk dude. Yeah. And he's chasing after these dudes, he's chasing after dudes, and they jump on a train and he can't get at him because the train's going too fast. Yeah. And then he's standing there, he screams really loud and then just turns to his friend and just fucking knocks him out. Just nails him. Yeah. <laughs> like remember when fucking Hulk did that to Thor? Yep. It's yeah. the best. Just blast him. Yeah. yeah. In Avengers. I yeah, I can't I can't put over Bone Tom, like how much fun I had watch. I haven't had that much fun watching a movie in a while. Bone Tomahawk is Brawl and Cell Block ninety nine because they're, oh, they're, they're, they're just they're awesome. just fucking different. Yeah, and like yeah, the Brawl and Cell Block ninety nine is just like it's kind of weird. Yeah, like Vince, it's Vin, it's Vince Vaughn as a badass, which that that was another big thing for me too. Was like I've been like waiting for Vince Vaughn to do something cool again. Yeah, like I thought it was going to be True Detective season two, but I was kind of let down by that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But I was like, this is him. And now this is him doing something cool again. And then I think we talked about it that the rumor is that that same director is making a cop movie now with Mel Gibson yeah. and fucking Vince Vaughn. Which, which is going to be awesome. Oh, dude. But those, dude, as far as like something different to watch, um, probably two of the gnarliest death scenes oh, yeah. maybe ever in each of them. So yeah. like, yeah, be prepared for that. Yeah. But dude, just super good. Um, How did I get started on that? Oh, Amazon Prime helped me watch Bone Tomahawk. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never. I think. Oh yeah, me and Laura watched Halloween three on there. Cool. Just like when we can't find stuff on like Netflix, we just check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime because it's on the Fire Stick, right? Yeah, Fire Stick, you can find anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we have it on the Fire Stick, but yeah. like we have an Amazon Prime account. Okay. And I think it was kind of annoying about Amazon Prime though too is like, like you'll see a movie like oh shit, but then you go and you have to pay for it. Like oh, some really? stuff is free and some stuff you have to pay okay. for. Okay. And we have an Amazon Prime account, which yeah. is, we pay for, which is strange. And the movies aren't cheap either. They're like four bucks. Yeah. Right? It's like not. It's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think we paid for Halloween 3 because I, I, I just never seen it before. Yeah. No one Is watch. that the weird one? Yeah, without Michael Myers. Yeah. I just I just never seen it before. I love it. It I was I love cool. that, you know, the fucking baby face. Like the. the oh, yeah. He's, I like. This is kind of like a thing that happened in the 70s that mm -hmm. doesn't happen nowadays. It's yeah. just like. A guy that looks like an uncle is just a star. Yeah, that, like yeah. Nick Nolte had a career of that. Yeah, like there's yeah, not some like right Ryan Gosling or like yeah. Tom Hardy or something. Yeah, it was just like, like a that guy like a man like, with a mustache. This guy's a great. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know, <laughs> of course, fifty. And of course, what, I can't remember how he gets the chick, but he has like a chick helping him. Of course, he bangs her in the hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just like oh, this guy's fifty and I think has he, a mustache. I think he was, I think he was the baby face in the fog too. Yeah, he was for sure. Yeah, because we no had, no no. You're thinking of Tom Tom Starrett. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Tom Scarrett. Yeah. I know. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. They um, they I I someone recommended it to me. I'd never I'd never seen John Carpenter's The Fog. Yeah. And then I know they did like a shitty remake in like the 2000s. I, liked it. I think. Oh really? I didn't mind it. Oh shit! I never saw it. Yeah. Okay. They did The Mist too. Is that what you're thinking of? Um, the Mist, the Mist is, is awesome. a, it's a remake. Oh yeah, they did they did a Mist remake. Yeah, but they did. Well, a, yeah, the one with Thomas too. Jane. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is like I, I love that movie. I thought that was great. It's amazing. The ending. There was a, the, I like anything. The, the, the spoiler the, alert. Yeah. I like anything where the people die. Like the good yeah. people die. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And then and yeah, the whole ending. It's spoiler alert. The ending of the Mist is they're trapped in the car. Yeah, they run out of gas. They're in the Mist, which. I remember when that movie came out, like the previews, I was like, eh, it's Stephen King, it, it looks okay. And then when I heard it, I was like, no, the gimmick is that there's huge monsters in the mist. Yeah. I was like, I'm sold. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, they get away, they're in the mist, the fucking car breaks down. Like, I think everyone is, there's only like four or five of them, like they've gone through so much shit. Yeah. And then they have a gun with basically, yeah, I think like there's four people, but then they have three bullets. <laughs> yeah. So I think like Thomas Jane kills like his daughter. Yeah. And like everybody else. <clears throat> and then he's like screaming. And then, yeah, and then, like, right when that happens, all the fucking, 
Monsters come up. No, no, I think. Uh, oh, the people save the ta- oh, yeah, the, the, the people to save them yeah, show up. I forgot all about like, that. Like right, he's That's in the car it screaming. It ended bad. Yeah, with like blood all over him, and he killed his family. And then someone, yeah, and someone told me the book is like worse. Like he, yeah. it's the, the the cavalry doesn't show up. He gets he goes to like a hotel room. And he writes like a letter, like in, I don't know, it's yeah. like, it's totally different, but we, there's the, a missed, movie, the missed rules. Because we're going to do Way of the Gun, yeah. another movie we need to watch is William Peterson mm-hmm. is the the, the baby face. Uh-huh. Willem Dafoe is the... Um, he got me with William Dafoe. The, the heel. Yeah. To live and die in L.A. It oh, seems like a you, Tony Scott movie. I, st- I started it. You, you, Dude. Yeah. We got to watch it. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. The Who's the baby face again? Is William Peterson. He's I, like the original I, CSI guy. I always think of him as he was the dad in Fear with Mark, yeah, Wal- yeah, yeah, with yeah, Mark yeah. Wahlberg. Yeah. But the, yeah, he was kind of like an ass-kicking action yeah. guy back in these days. And like in that movie, he's He's just, in Manhunter too, right? Yeah, yeah. Which it's, I've never oh, seen. Awesome. Yeah. But it's basically... He said to live in a die in LA is just nuts. Yeah, right. And it's it's it sounds it seems like a Tony Scott movie. Yeah, it's I don't think it's a Tony Scott movie. It might be. Uh, is it? I think so. Okay, it seems like a Tony Scott movie. Yeah. Um, and then he he's like it's basically Riggs before Riggs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Die Hard is is him, and he's just like a guy that has a death wish, and then they give him like uh, like every. Like late eighties, early nineties, it's like we got this guy that's just a maniac, and then they yeah, have to give him like this cop who's out of control. The most like by the books cop is his partner. <laughs> yeah. Crazy man, you can't do that. Yeah. And then that's he's not just the like, book. Yeah. Fuck you, and he jumps off a bridge. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's not protocol. Yeah. yeah. They do something really cool though. Like William Peterson really is like this. Like not that he's like trying to kill himself. Yeah. He's just. Reckless, but that yeah, that was like Mel Gibson and Lethal Weapon. Yeah, yeah but he, he was did, suicidal. He, He's like holding a gun to his head. Yeah, that's William true. Peterson's not doing just doesn't give a fuck. And then Willem Dafoe is like great heel, by the, the way. most effeminate, aggressive guy ever. That's like he's like really into art and stuff yeah. like that. And he has like a weird Amazon. That's, a, that's chick. a little bit that I saw. Yeah, yeah, like following him around. Yeah, but he's like this fucking savage. Yeah, dude, it's it's awesome. Like yeah. I, I I would love to watch that with you so we could I'm get in. ideas. Yeah, but, man. Sold. But, yeah. And then, and Manhunter is from the 80s too, right? Yeah. That's like early 80s. That's probably 83. Oh, fuck. The, co- the cover is awesome. It's like, awesome. Yeah, the fucking poster. And that's, that's um, William Peterson, Tom Noonan, who plays Ripper in Last Action Hero. Yep. Uh, but he plays, um, he plays like the the main like serial killer in Manhunter. I can't think of his name. I thought we were going to have a name. Uh, I'm finishing uh, a, a move. A bl- bl- uh, oh yeah, Butcher in the Blade. I can't yeah. remember his name uh, uh, right now. Oh Ripper. Well, Ripper's from Last Action Hero. El- oh, he had a name in oh, Manhunter yeah. too. Oh, and shit. it's awesome. Oh shit, and it's just his last name. That's great. Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Dollar Hyde. There you go. Yeah, Dollar Hyde. <laughs> and then um, the uh, fuck, his name's Brian. Uh, Brian something. It's the police chief from Super Troopers. Oh, okay, Brian. F- uh, whatever his name is, Denny. No, I wish it was Brian Denny. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, yes, yeah, son of a... Like, just... Yeah, First Blood era, <laughs> Brian Dennehy, just in... Yeah. But it's that... It's... He plays Hannibal Lecter. Like, the... Okay. The Super Troopers guy plays yeah, Hannibal Lecter. that's fucking awesome. In it. And, like, I love Hannibal Lecter's... How is no... Okay, like, you know, everyone's <clears throat> wrestled on a card. I'm saying that as you guys, because I probably haven't wrestled on a card. No, and I have. Nobody's done a Hannibal Lecter gimmick? No. Brother from, uh... What's his name? Um, Canadian dude. Wrestled for a smash. Comes out with a wrench and a fucking chain. Oh, yeah. What's his name? I feel bad now. <laughs> Kevin, you wrestled him <laughs> at, one of the, uh, at one of the London Comic Cons. Uh, the recent one? No, the one year before. Jesse Jesse Amato. Oh, Jesse Amato. Hell, yeah. Yeah, but he wears, like, the Hannibal Lecter mask. Yeah. And he, like, comes out. Sabu like, used to come out on the Hannibal Lecter gimmick. So cool. Yeah. Very they cool. just untie him. He would just go nuts. Yeah. Which is great. So, like, there's always the Hannibal Lecter mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? There we had that crazy Steve guy that wasn't the crazy Steve. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, crazy, T not TNA's crazy Steve, but, like, the local guy that used to come out with, like, a Pikachu. Yes. Remember that guy? Yeah. Like, uh... Oh, Spaz. Spaz. Spaz, that's Yeah. It. Um... What were you saying? You said, I thought you were going to say nobody's ever done a Hannibal Lecter gimmick. No one's done, like, the actual gimmick where, like, just wear blue dickies and a white shirt. Yeah. 
That's creepy. Yeah. I like that. Slick yeah. back hair. I say slick back hair was crucial yeah. too. Yeah, and just... Yeah, yeah, just biting people. A real creep. I like that yeah. a lot. When he's fucking beating him with the club, oh, like to the dude. Apple Music. Yeah, yeah, that's a great movie. Oh, we have a list there. Yeah, we should just start doing movie movie night instead of going to movies. Like we go see the dope movies that come out. Yeah, we need to start doing like just watching movie night. good shit. Yeah. The way like I remember when I saw Way of the Gun in the theater, I. And not that I, I thought it was cool. I just didn't. It wasn't what I expected. Yeah. Which really weird. Yesterday, when I was looking up the music, yeah. uh, I found I was having trouble finding it. I watched the trailer. I thought we'd be in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, one of the trailers had "Break Stuff" by Limp Bizkit in it. Very cool. It was just like, <laughs> I was like, I mean, if you watch the like pretty weird, it's like it's not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. So when I saw it, it was, it was like it's really complicated, and I was yeah. like, I was like, eh. And then, like, I think I watched it two or three times after. Every time I watch it, I like it more Dude, it's and more. Great. I, I, I hate saying that, but, like, it, it's so complicated. You do have to, because there's so many different storylines. Yeah. Like, the more you watch it, the more you understand I stuff. I love Tyne Daly in that movie. Uh, Ty Diggs. Guy. Ty Diggs, that's yeah, it. Not yeah. Ty Daly, yeah. yeah, him and, like, because him and the other <laughs> dude are, like, so monotone. Yeah. It's, but it's fucking awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Dude, like, I love, I, I, I think I'm a big fan of movies where there's, everything is a character. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I like like, like I like the first Ocean's Eleven a lot. Yeah. Like there's I like I'm the same way. I love movies with like really good characters, and especially think, a bunch of characters. That's why GI Joe should be so easy to make, but they're yeah. just not happening. Anyways. I think that that's what we should focus on for uh, Butcher and the Blade. It's yeah, just like literally everything that is on us means something, like small details, or says something, yeah, or like that. It's just like like you said, like 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 Tay Diggs and the other dude are like. It's obvious they told him, like, okay, these guys, they're real monotone. You know what I mean? Like, they do this, they do that. Like, yeah. And, it's, and it's just small details. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it's not like this over-the-top gimmick. It's, I like I like when gimmicks and characters have just small little details. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's perfect. Yeah, it's, you know, it's crucial. And the doctor's like a complete just... Bitch. Yeah. And then he's like crying. Yeah, see, yeah. I'm going to deliver this baby. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah, fucking Julia Lewis. Yeah. And, uh, uh, James Caan, like, steals I the love movie. Him. Oh, dude. It's just, like, the grizzled, the grizzled fucking... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's so good. Benicio Del Toro. Has James Caan and Harvey Cattell ever done a movie together? I don't think so, but it wouldn't blow that my would mind. Awesome. The One of the best scenes of Way of the Gun is when... Fuck, I... Oh, the bag man. Yeah. Because Benicio Del Toro and James Caan have the conversation, and he's, like, broing down with them. He's like, yep, yeah, but... You're the bag man. Like I yeah, can't. Yeah. Like you can't. We can't hang out, man. You're the bag yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so. It's so that. good, man. Yeah. We, we need to do that. Like when interviewers are interviewing us. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, you gotta go, bud. Yeah, we're but, not hanging out with you, man. Yeah, but you're the promo guy. Yeah, like, yeah. I we'll just, see you, man. <laughs> yeah, take a walk. You're a nice guy, but you're the promo guy. You can't yeah. hang out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. Uh, okay, well, but yeah, I mean, we got really off topic of the Christmas show. Yeah, there. We never talk about movies. We talk about movies. Yeah, for the movies and fitness, we need to talk about a little more often. Yeah, we can do that. No problem. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Should we give? I feel like we should give more thanks for the Christmas show. Yeah. Because it's it could honestly it couldn't. Yeah, I mean, it, without a hitch, man, it was it was such a cool day. Yeah. And there was such there everyone was so many room. There was so much room for errors. And like uh, the really cool, like I I love like DIY projects. Yeah, and like and that's why even like uh, I guess to to put this out there a little bit was my my idea for the finish of the show was you coming out with a referee shirt and being the referee. Yeah, but there was no referee shirt available. There was no referee shirt back there, and no. I'm sitting there like the Chris the Chris Bros are like, <clears throat> all right, like like we're gonna go out there and when we put them up in the. Whatever they're down the shoulders, yeah, yeah. They're like whenever we put them up, blah blah. blah like you got to come out, blah, blah blah. But then they earlier they said something about a ref shirt. Yeah, that was my it was my idea. I should have yeah. found one earlier in the night. It was like, yeah, there's gonna be a ref shirt. I was like, okay. And then like I'm looking around, I'm like, there's no ref shirt. My I'm idea sure was like, literally, like even if you just had like Mullins ref shirt, like the smallest yeah, ref yeah. shirt you could find. Yeah, and that like you're just ripping out of it. Yeah, but anyway, so there was no ref shirt available, but like. So, like, you know, stuff, <laughs> and I liked it even better that you were just like, uh, I'm the ref, and then you just counted the three, like, yeah. it makes it so, it makes it more, like, fun, and, like, a yeah. DIY kind of thing, and, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like that shit, but yeah. what I was what I was getting at was, like, the, with the DIY stuff was, like, I mean, I worked really fucking hard, straight up, like, yeah. for a long, because, you know, I know you were, you were away touring, and I had a little bit of a break, so I really wanted to make this like, you know, this was such a big opportunity for Buffalo. I wanted to make sure it was good and help you out. And I really thought I had everything nailed down. But then like little stuff like like 
Todd the bellkeeper just showed up. And it was yeah. like, oh, well, that's pretty crucial. Yeah. If and how about, were, like, bellkeeper, like, what was going on with the first match? <laughs> I don't know. I think was he, he, was, not there? he was, like, out of position or something. Because <laughs> Ricky, Ricky Shane Page called for the bell and just didn't happen. I don't know what happened. And then he, like, walked over and was like, like is I, there even a bell? <laughs> I mean, he found one, so like yeah. something happened. I, I think, I think Ash. I was watching that with Ash. I just couldn't see. Yeah. And I think Ash just said Todd was like out of position. However, that's possible. I don't know. Right. But anyways, so like <laughs> Todd, the bellkeeper, just randomly showing up and being the bellkeeper without me even asking. Yeah. And then Dick Justice's girlfriend being like, oh, like a half hour before the show starts, being like, oh, if you want, I can like go to the ring and like. You know, take the ring jackets and the stuff that people. Yeah, wear. I was like, oh yeah, that's you. Please, like I could like, been a pile of clothes in the corner. <laughs> yeah, like fans like stealing them. Yeah, like I like those are like things that just completely slipped my mind. And it was yeah. like, but that's what I'm saying. It was just cool. Like, then the, I mean, like those Ricky people, Shane Page. Yeah, just showed up and refereed the first. Like, yeah. Did you have any idea he was doing that? No, me neither. Like, like I was, I was going to go out there and watch, and I was like, Ricky, what are you doing? And I was like, I think he was nervous to tell me. Because I, I think he didn't want me to tell him no. And yeah. he, was like, he was like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to go out and just like referee this match. I was like, oh, oh okay. And That's he was awesome. just like, like an actual death match guy. Yeah, referee. Like the guy right yeah, now. Yeah, the, the, the man. death match guy. And like of the he's year. refing yeah. of like a silly death match. Yeah, for free. Didn't even tell yeah. us he was going to do it. He's like, awesome. Just, you know, the stuff like that. Yeah, people just came through and like did that stuff for us. Was like, it's just fucking awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, super yeah. awesome. And like, you know, we said it in the speech, but like, Tim Thatcher flying from Germany for a day yeah. just to do the show. Barnett coming for basically free. for free just to, so he could watch, be a part of the whole thing yeah. and watch every time I die. Like it's just Sam, it's you know, awesome. Sammy. Sammy was in Japan for a fucking month. Yeah, I know he turned on other bookings to come in and do this. Like, yeah, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, man, it was fucking cool. And it's like, I don't know. It's 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 kind of weird because I feel like wrestling is kind of weird, and this isn't like to underplay Sammy at all. Yeah, but Sammy's so busy. Yeah. And like, I mean, I mean, he told me he had other offers when I was like, I, you know, I went up to him and I told him, I was like, dude, this is so, I'm so thankful that you did this. Like, I'm so happy that you're here and stuff like that. And he was just like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah. cool. You know what I mean? I knowing like, Sammy, like, I think he just like, I mean, he was really tired. That and he, like, he just legit, like, like passed out in the locker room and missed the entire t- show. I was just gonna tell you that. I yeah. wasn't sure if you knew or not. No, no, he told me yesterday. <laughs> he was like so stoked to like watch like eat and everything, and he yeah. just fell asleep yeah. on his book bag on a pillow for a good yeah. four hours. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but he'd been in Japan for a month, so I mean, yeah. what can you say? He was hurting. Um, uh, but like even like even like the local guys, like you know, because obviously like there was it didn't get too out of control, but. You know this this shit's gonna happen. Like we couldn't get everybody on the show. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So like the the local guys that weren't booked on the show, but still came even the night before, came and helped with the ring and came and yeah. worked security and with ring crew and like you know it's just it fun. was enormous, man. Dude, they, that that's they, hands down. They said that's the fastest they've ever gotten the ring done yeah. ever. And like it's funny too because like if you think about that, that's like the part that I would want to get done the fastest. Yeah. So I don't have to be there. Yeah. Usually, it, it, like that's what Brett was saying. He was like, usually it's like, I don't know. People are just usually, I don't know, like they're just young and not in a rush to do anything. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know what I mean? They just yeah. whatever. But like this time, they knew that there was a purpose to fucking yeah. get that. We hammered it in their brains <laughs> for over a month yeah. that this ring needs to get down as soon as possible so the bands can start. And they just tore through it. I remember like I tried to help, and everyone like just wouldn't let me. Yeah. And then I I went to the back, and I did something, and then. Body, I think Body said something about how quick it was. I was like, it's done already? And he was I like, yeah. I couldn't believe that. I was like, holy fuck, dude. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it was like, that, like to say that about like Big Lamar, like there's a an enormous kid that lives in, I mean, like yeah. visually, if that guy's in the ring, you're like, oh, fuck. That's what I would say about him. Yeah. And he's loud and he, yeah. he's loud. And he like, can move. It just like, and honestly, like Lamar, if you're listening to this, it just slipped our mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just like, shit, like it would have made sense for Lamar to be in on like that eight man or something like yeah. that. Like, he's so big or like come out and be a heavy exactly. for someone. Or, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it just comes in like you're saying. We had 10 <clears throat> matches. We probably should have had eight. Yeah. And it's just it's just hard to pick and choose who gets yeah. on and who doesn't. And I, and I knew Lamar was bummed that yeah. he wasn't on the, th- on the card. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And there's other dudes. It was just Donovan Danhausen. Like he was in... Toronto the night before and he just hit me up he's like hey man if there's anything I can do on that yeah let me know and I it was just like random 
like I'll you know if if you want we're gonna we're, I need dudes to like help move stuff and just yeah. kind of like maybe need for like I don't I don't know like stage crew something you know what I mean like there'll be something for you to do I can't tell you you're gonna wrestle or not yeah and then I was like well shit I got this like idea in my match I need a lawyer like a shitty lawyer yeah so I was like are you still coming and he's like yeah I'm like can you bring a suit and he was like yeah sure it's like perfect yeah and he's he like was so in character backstage he was like I'm gonna come out and just be this like little weasel yeah. and then. <laughs> Again, like my overthought of everything, it, it, you know, the crowd was so fucking hot. Yeah. You really couldn't hear what he was saying. No, and, you could. Really? Yeah. I was, okay, good. I'm not going to lie. When you talked about this, I was like, I don't know if that's going to get over. Weird. But I'm just, I'm glad he grabbed a microphone and no, I, they totally understood yeah. what was going on. Well, I wanted him to come out and like instantly make himself known. Like, yeah, he did. He I mean? did a great job. And then that. go grab the mic from Gullo. And yes, then, that's. You know I man. thought it was just going to get totally overlooked, and no, yeah. everybody wouldn't be able to see it. But he did a good job making sure he was seen. That's and, awesome. and grabbing the microphone helped a lot. Yeah, too. he was awesome. Perfect. Yeah, and that that got a good reaction when I did launch. I do wish I did launch Crowdy into the crowd though. <laughs> yeah, it was a long distance. <laughs> no way. I would have made it. <laughs> I could have made it. Um, <laughs> what, what, I think what, yeah, actually like one of my top three moments of the show by far was. Uh, when you were cutting your promo at the end of the show, yeah. like you were honestly just getting to wrap up what you were saying, and somebody in the crowd was like, "Heat's in the ring," and you were like, "And the heat is in the ring." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was fucking perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like uh, that. I I I kept saying it over and over again about how it just everything just fell in place. Yeah, and I like, and this isn't me saying this because obviously I'm I wouldn't say my, I'm like as successful as other people, mm-hmm. but like. I have made a pretty cool life for myself. Yeah. At this point. 100%. And I always like the the joke that I have in my head about my life is just it's always <clears throat> been just clawing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I'm still clawing, you know what I mean? Yep. And I never want to lose that because yeah. once you lose that, it's like everything kind of goes out the window. Yeah, right? So like that was like the first big thing in my life that just went perfect. Yeah. And I you know, it was literally like and I think that was it. And I think, like, when Laura sent me that text message, it was just like... <laughs> Waterworks. Fuck me, man. Bam. And I just started crying. Like, yeah. And it was just like that whole, like... It wasn't like a... And, I'm, and, you know, there's been times in my life where I'm just, like, fucking broke or something like that. And I just fucking... You're so stressed. Yes. That you can't do anything but cry. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, you're just there. I've never had that, like... I'm so happy that this is just exploding out of that's, me. Yeah, that's and why And that's what it was. Where it was just like, fuck, man. Like... <sighs> yeah. You know, it's fun, and it's sweet. like now this whole next year is like the ideas that I have in my head it's kinda just c- to make an eight, eight match card. Yeah. The perfect eight match. You card know what I mean? And it's like, with it's, Jimmy Havoc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And only with Jimmy Havoc. Yeah. But like, it was like one of those things, like thinking about it in the minute, I was like on the next card, like I want Joey Ryan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause that, you know, his spots and his character is going to make the show better. He's going to find a place somewhere. And it's yeah. like, yeah, it's going to cost money. Yeah. Yes. Will we get the money? We'll find it somewhere. We'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, that's not that like, not knocking anything that was on this year's card, but it was just like something that is visually stimula- stimulating for every single person that's there and make people that are like willing to do things outside of the wrestling yeah. to make it enjoyable. Like Santa Claus doing a double choke slam, right? Yes. In Kevin Bennett's moonsault finisher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was perfect. Awesome. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Every like, Dick, I got to give Dick, I was thinking this, and I got to have Dick justice, Dick justice props on this was he was, he's like every, like, you know, every match needs something like that. Yeah. At, yeah. at a show like that. <clears throat> of course. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, I, this, I, I, another, as I, I just, I feel bad to the matches where it was like, okay, you guys go out and have a wrestling match. Like, yeah, we should have in, in, implemented more fun gimmicky stuff. Yeah. And that's just it. Like I said, litmus test. Like, it's just, it's a test for next year. And like, yeah, I guess, yeah that's the thing. Like, but at the same time, it's like, it's not like what we did was bad. It no, was not fun. at all. No, was, it was, that's fun. it was a fucking great all. show. And now we just know how to make it better next exactly. year. Exactly. And all. it's like, that's the big thank you. It's just like the guys that were like, yeah, I'll take a chance on this. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like they didn't have to. Nope. And it, you know, that was awesome. Like, uh, having, uh, 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 Ohio's for Killers. You know what yep. I mean? Like the Chris Bros on it, Team having tremendous. Team Tremendous on it. Uh, obviously, we thanked Timothy Thatcher. We thanked Josh Barnett, um, Joey Janela, Penelope, 
uh, Tyler Body for being Santa. Yeah. Kevin Bennett. That was a great Kev for you, like with you know Joey bringing out Penelope and like he was saying, I don't, was it you saying or, or Andy? Like you need, like now you need something. A heater. Yeah, some kind of heater. Like said, like you coming out on Santa Claus's shoulders was was fucking awesome. Yeah. Because I was actually I was thinking I was like that's gonna look kind of weird like walking out with Santa like when you be like here he is everybody like yeah. coming out of shoulders was perfect. It was fucking yeah. perfect. And the fact that it's like his best buds. F- yeah. For forever. Just call me Russo. <laughs> Um, call me Ed Ferreira. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. <laughs> call me Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, it thanks everyone and the eight man. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we literally just said, guys, make a match. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, like, yeah, here's the eight guys. Pick, you, do something. Pick your dudes yep. and just go for it. Yep. You know what I mean? And like Mikey and Thurston, I don't know if they called the whole match, but like I would think most of it. They did a great job. I know they at least for, like formulated it. I love. Um, I love the picture of the three dives or the four dives, like uh, Greg dove. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and, then, and then Puff's picture at the end. Yeah, it was Greg, and then someone else dove. Greg, Mikey. Vince, Vince Valor first, then yeah. Greg, then Mikey, then Mikey and, then, and then Puff. Yeah, yeah. And it was awesome. Mikey actually did a pretty sweet fucking big flippy gun yeah. off the top. Mikey's great. Yeah, and then probably like Puff's dive was hands down. One of the biggest reactions of the show. Yeah, yeah. so cool. <laughs> yes, Puffy uh, Roads. Puffy Roads. The dusty I'll roads of Buffalo. Roads <laughs> um, like I said, RJ, RJ City, Greg Iron, Dick Justice. That opener was perfect for what we had. Yeah, and then yeah, Nate just being so fucking stoked to wrestle. It was just awesome, and like that was a. Th- we we didn't talk about it because obviously we had bad on the podcast, but like Nate came to like training on Thursday. Yeah. And like it was crazy to see you be like let's just do rolls. Yeah. Cuz like Nate does lucha He's, stuff. Yeah, he trains there. lucha. So if anyone's doing no rolls, it's Yeah. And it's 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 funny because like we went through things and he was doing things we were just like what the fuck. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's it, you Oh, you jump it. jump in the air but don't belly bump. You got to land on your hands and your chest and then smash your thighs into the ground so you protect your knees yeah. like yeah just crazy shit but it, like you know we don't do that so no. like it's and it you know it was kind of cool to it's have it's great to spice things up yeah Nate finally like come to the east coast and kind of see how we are in the east coast and I'm sure like he's gonna go back and go like eh it's not like we do it here yeah but you know what I mean it's at just least di- he got just a, different. it's a different context of it and for real yeah um Overall, I'm just it was just cool to have him come out and stay. And right now, instead of going home, he went to Dave Chris's house, and he's training at Dave Chris's house. Oh, that's right, I forgot. For four days. Did he fly there? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. So like, you want to talk about wrestling? I totally forgot. And about you that. want that dude? Like, you want someone that like is going to make your show better? That loves wrestling. Yeah. Get Brody King on your on your card. Yeah. Like that. stop. Stop thinking about it and just it's, do it. It's already happening. I said once once he once he catches steam, that's it. What's but, the evolve but, match? I don't know. I saw he, he's doing evolve. He's already he's already doing Court Bauer's uh, MLW thing. I saw him. PWG has interest in him. Like it's it's gonna it's it's happening. In the for the table thing, they said, "Yo, congratulations on the match." Meaning, I know he said he was supposed to do evolve. I don't know who he's working. I think on. they like announced it, but like a, I didn't like see who he was name. wrestling. And they said, "You better get ready for your flips." Sweet. So he's. Going against a flippy guy. That's awesome. Uh, 30 years old. Yeah, he's 30. Um, but, like, that's the thing. Like, it's just to see a guy care that much about it. You know oh, yeah. What I mean? Yeah, it's just, pa- just passion. Like yeah, I said, that's, so cool. that's the kind of people I like to surround myself with people passionate yeah. that, like, enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and just, like, you know, all the fans and stuff, too. Like, I, I stayed out there for a while. Kind of like you did after the Eats set. I, I hung out there for a while after the wrestling and just yeah. talked with people and took pictures and stuff. And the amount of compliments on the podcast and shit was fucking unreal. Yeah. How about Steve? Steve Michike, our highest rated guest. Yeah, we got some stats back. Yeah. And he said, uh, Mitch, I, I, I told Mitch that. And he was like, oh, fuck. And he was like, yeah, actually, like five people came up to me at the at the Christmas show and said that they really enjoyed the episode. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So and like Mitch, that- Mitch was one and uh, Jerry Bomb Laura was second. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so the two most listened places, Buffalo, New York. Yep. And well, I can't I can't remember. Bolton, Ontario. There you go. I knew it was in Canada. That's our second our second highest city is Bolton, Ontario. 
Where and actually, Bolton? actually, a third was Houston, Texas. Really? Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Bolton, Ontario. Where is Bolton? I don't Ontario? know. Laura, Laura knows. She was like, "Oh yeah, Bolton." Like she knows all about it. Oh yeah, Bolton. Google, Google that real quick. Yeah, those are uh, those are our big markets. So maybe we'll do maybe we'll go do a live show in Bolton, Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. First is Buffalo, Buffalo, of course. All right, I'm good looking up Bolton right now. But yeah, Let's see ma- if we can hit it on that Sarnia run. <laughs> <laughs> Make a double shot out of it. <laughs> do some live. It's 106 pie. miles from here. Oh, it's actually not bad. No. I feel like is it? It's uh. Is it out towards like Windsor and stuff? Nope. It's like above Toronto. Oh, okay. Brampton, Mississauga, Vaughan, and then good old Bolton. Okay, so it's just outside Toronto? A little bit. Makes sense. Yeah, probably within like 30 miles. Mm Mm-hmm. Very cool. Bolton, what's up? uh, (laughs) Shout shout out to Bolton. Um, All I mean, all the ETID dudes just were like hyped on the wrestling show, which for me was cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like... For them to go out of their way and tell me that was nice yeah i someone recorded a video of our match from the balcony Uh and brian talbert one of the owners of violent gentleman was there like he is he loves photos like he has a really nice camera and he takes photos and stuff and he was like shooting the match yeah and i just like i don't know why it like popped me that he was like taking pictures of like the double vertical suplex yeah you know what i mean just like it was it was kind of cool that's very cool yeah did uh how the vg guys do the, how long is that is that pop up here for? Um, I think it's almost, so someone Friday. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was like another week or something. I was thinking about going over there tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I actually wanted to go. I'll go yeah. with you. Yeah, um, we should go. I haven't gone at all yet. So did yeah. you go? Did you go? Just when they were setting up, like oh, okay. it wasn't even like set up yet. Like yeah. literally the first night when yeah. I was picking up, I picked up uh, Matt at Matt. the airport. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, we should go over there. Like Chewy's there. Like just one of the. Young boys. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. I'll check it out. He's staying at Wes's house on the couch. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. Wes is, Wes is holding up some brothers. Ooh. Puff. <laughs> uh-huh. 10 p.m. Star Wars at AMC, question mark? Oh. Yeah, we got 45 minutes. Yeah. We're going to go see Star Wars. I saw it yesterday. Puff I saw it yesterday. It. Yeah. I can't def- wait. It's definitely worth a second watch. Yeah. I ate a whole... We got a refill on the popcorn. Me and Laura, um, I ate a whole thing of goobers, and then I ate a whole thing of milk duds. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and then I then I went home and had real food, like some chicken yeah. and vegetables, and then I ate a whole tub of Ben and Jerry's. It was like it's you like a, a limited. It. It's a limited edition, oh, like yeah. salted caramel thing or something. <laughs> I uh, so I, I was figuring I was going to take today off, but now that popcorn sounds really. Remember good yesterday again. when I said I was going to try to eat sixteen thousand calories? Yeah, of- did you get to thirteen hundred? No. I didn't even, I think I don't, I ate like, I seriously was still conservative. It yeah. sucks. So I think today I got to. Oh, you like washed what you ate? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you did a sub earlier, but. So today's the day. No, still no. <laughs> no, that's true. No, I did fuck up today. I ate a big Buford burger. I saw a fast from, food bag in your car. Checkers. <laughs> yeah, checkers sucks. Yeah. Why would and you then eat I got, a checkers? I just want to hate, my, just hate was, myself. Was too. it like on like one of those like <laughs> shitty, because those rest stops yeah, yeah. always have checkers. And then oh, uh, like sucks. a popcorn chicken or something like that. Ugh. <laughs> Sounds terrible. It's great. <laughs> and then uh, ate a sub. Uh-huh. And then I'll probably order five or six different candies. What was it? We got uh, on the way home from Toronto. It was uh, me, Puff, and Sammy Callahan got Wendy's. Chubbers? And we got, uh, they had. The Chubbers? Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, that was that was at a gas station in Canada. That's the size. If you want to know how big Frankie's dick is, Check out go a ch- find a Chubber. <laughs> go, if you live in Canada. Go to a gas hey, station in Canada. It's a huge pepperoni stick, and it's called a Chubber. <laughs> hey, <laughs> straight up. Hey, Bolton. Go to your local place <laughs> yeah. and get that. But check out a Chubber, yeah. which Sammy Canlan actually bought one and ate one. <laughs> I like it. It was just a big beef stick. But uh, yeah, Wendy's had like a, a sriracha sauce. They yeah. had like a boom boom sauce. And then they had this, it was called like awesomeness sauce or something. Really? Yeah, it was actually really good. Do you think I should buy tickets online? Um. Well, we got to check in. With Movie Pass, yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's the, that's the only thing with Movie Pass. I can't figure that out. Is like you can't get. Oh fuck yeah! Uh, Ten o'clock show. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I think we're good. I told you. I went tried to go to seven o'clock yesterday, and only front two rows were left. <sighs> I think AMC will be okay though. Yeah, their popcorn's delicious. I feel like I should get yeah. some. 
all right, you might as well. Yeah. Fuck it. You got a bunch of time to... <laughs> to reload? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should we call it? Yeah. Yeah, throw the X up? Yeah, I think throwing the X up, no more run-ins. This was, yeah. uh, yeah, c- kind of like the e set, no fucking on course. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going straight at it. Straight at it. We're a punk rock band. Yeah. Straight to it. We put some time in. Yeah, we did. Kev, you all right? everybody. Kev, Kev, you all right? I'm good. Cool. Kev's always good. Yeah, no, no, no double header this time. No. That's I do. Here's, here's my run in, I guess. Yes. It's, it's, it's I love run ins. Yes. As long as it's chronic, let's go. <laughs> it's just like, it's fucking cool now how we, like, Right now, we don't have to fucking get them in the tank or anything like that. Like, you're off for a bit, so we can yeah. just do real podcasts that are coming out in, like, two days. Yep. Yeah. It's fucking it's awesome. sweet. Yeah. Let's get a bunch in tank. Yeah. Sure. We're going to get... Uh, we got some more guests coming up, but it's cool that we got to do another one, just me and you, just bullshitting. Yeah. Because uh, I did I did get some tweets that people were excited to hear us talk about the Christmas show, so that was very exciting. Yeah. And by a lot, I mean probably about four tweets. I feel like <laughs> I was very... In the beginning of the podcast, I was very, like, melancholy. And now I'm a little Picked more excited. Up. Yeah. Well, I think I kicked out. Like you said, because we were both <clears throat> like I I got hit hard. Yeah. After we got after we got done working out, but uh, yeah, the, the post stress hangover. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I I same thing. I envisioned us starting this podcast like all fired up. Yeah. But we were both just feeling like shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You notice. His like Tommaso Champa look right now, <laughs> like the grays coming in on the cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I went, I went down to a goatee and straight up stopped getting booked. So I fucking grew, grew, figured I'd grow oh my beard. My God, figured I'd grow my hey, beard back out. <laughs> I love the fact that it was an around the mouth goatee. You're like, yeah, stop getting booked because of an around the mouth goatee. I, I had I, a slow month. I thought it looked great, but fucking things really slowed down. <laughs> I love that. The fact that an around the mouth goatee got you not booked. <laughs> Usually that was well, no, that's true. Because when like Spock, like yeah. evil Spock, yeah. just had an around the mouth goatee. I don't I'm not a Star Trek. I'm not a Star Trek. Me guy. neither. But there's a good picture of like Spock with an around the mouth goatee. And it was like a it was a huge thing in like cartoons that like when there was an evil version of like oh, the yeah. bad guy, yeah. he just had a goatee. Always had a he just goatee. Had a, around the mouth. Yeah. So cool. Didn't, didn't do nothing for me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you that. We well, didn't go heal. That's no. I mean, maybe that was probably the problem. Yeah. Try changing things up on my yeah. own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there yeah, it is. Give it to him, man. The heat's in the ring, brother. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank See you. See you soon.